If you have to pick between full range of motion or going heavier, and you want the best results, you want to build muscle, you want to speed up your metabolism, you, have, you want to have good strength and mobility, go with full range of motion. When the intensity is controlled, in other words, both sets are hard, full range of motion is going to build more muscle, even if the weight is lighter. So when you're working out with weights, go for full range of motion. Ooh, you're going to get all the muscle junk here. <laughs> all, all, all frustrated. You know what? The data on this is, 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 is pretty good. Um, it's, you know, it, 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 here's the deal. Intensity has to be controlled, right? A hard, heavy set and a light, full range of motion set, maybe not. But when you're training full range of motion, um, it, with the intensity being controlled, you build more muscle. The data on this is is very clear. The stretch portion, the squeeze portion. Yeah, and ranges. If you build strength there, you're going right. to have opportunity to build more muscle. It's That's right. pretty logical. That's right. And then if if you if you don't, because here's the deal with strength training. it's When it's applied appropriately, different uh, planes, good full ranges of motion, different movements, it's one of the best things you could do for functional flexibility. It's incredible because it builds mobility. If you're working in full ranges of motion, you have strength in those ranges of motion, mm -hmm. um, it, meaning you're strong and stable. Your risk of injury is very low. If you train heavy and get real strong in a shortened range of motion, you can actually increase your risk of potential injury anytime you move outside of that range of motion, which means when you're outside playing with your kids or you know, you're, you're throwing a Frisbee or you step off a curb, you move outside that range of motion – that you normally train in, now you've got some real issues with stability. Well, yeah, I just look at it as like, why add all this dysfunction uh, to your movement and this dysfunction to um, just uh, being able to move around? It, for, for me, it's like you can build that same kind of muscle, that same look, but also still have all the abilities and the athleticism to go with it. Um, it's just, it's interesting to me. Like, this is where we get into that whole camp of like, I just want to like do whatever is going to make me look awesome and, yeah. and, and big. And then you see like the restriction and then the, the pain, the chronic pain as a result too, of like limiting your range of motion. I think, I think why that is Justin is because like you've gotten to a point, like the people that, okay, they, that are like, um, you know, building, trying to build a, a buff physique and care about that. Um, probably been lifting weights for a while, probably mid twenties or older, and have already created enough bad patterns and shortened range of motion that they don't want to do the work. Either. Yes. Yeah, because stepping weight, outside yeah. of it is like, yeah, oh, man, I got to go that. way down. Like, way. Yeah. Like, I don't think you're going to have a hard time convincing the, like, the 16 year old kid that you introduce weights to saying, hey, this mm -hmm. is the better yeah, way. If we get them early. Yeah, yeah. This is the better way to do things. Okay. Get it. Like, I'm, I'm committed now to doing that. Right. But what has happened is, and, and, obviously modern life has not helped or supported this, right? We sit in these chairs or a bed at 90 degrees. Like yeah. there's nothing in our, we don't challenge ourselves. Yeah. So. There's <laughs> nothing, there's nothing in our young adulthood even where you would be pretty much sit, like comfortably sitting all the way down, right. And like a full, a full, full deep squat. There's just nothing that we do that way anymore. So you lose that ability. And then, you know, then you get older and then you decide, Oh, I want to get in shape. I want to look a certain way. And then you hear a bunch of knuckleheads on a podcast like us go, Hey, by the way, if you did it, you know, fuller range of motion, you would, and then you go to try it and you're like, Oh shit, that's hard. Yeah. Or, Oh, that's too tough. I need to lighten the load. And then you're like, I don't want to light. I don't want to have to, I can squat 400 pounds right now. You mean I, I now I have to go down to 185? Like, I don't want to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's the conundrum. That's part of it. The other part yeah. of it is that there's, a, I think there's a perception, which is so strange because if it's applied appropriately, it's the opposite. There's a perception that really full range of motion increases your risk of injury. Like how many times have you heard people say, "Oh, I, squat, I don't squat all the way down. That's good. that's not good for your back. It's not good for your knees." Like, that was oh, perpetuated don't. by a lot of certifications, and really, it was them protecting themselves. Totally, uh, yeah, totally. Because the truth is, things. the truth is, if you own a range of motion, meaning you're strong and stable, and what you're handling, you can handle. The risk of injury is zero. If unless somebody comes and throws you or pushes you. If you're moving in a range of motion that you don't own, that's when you that's when you start to uh, develop problems. And so if you're always training in a particular range of motion, that means you're only owning that range of motion because strength training is quite specific. There's a little carryover outside of it, but when you go too far outside of it, it's as if you lost that strength and stability. So if yeah. you always do loaded half squats your whole life and you could go up to 315 pounds, you, you probably would have to back off down to like 150 or, a, or less to do a full squat to be safe. Yeah. Even though the weight feels light in your back, you've handled much more, because that range of motion is so outside of what you train, you gotta go way down. That's the other thing to understand here with what I'm talking about is don't take your current weight and then say, oh, I heard on mind pump, I gotta go all the way down. No, 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 you're gonna hurt yourself. 
go way lighter, play with the new range of motion, develop strength in that range of motion. And then for the aesthetic people, like you'll build the best looking physique this way. It just builds the most muscle and it builds the most complete looking uh, physique. I think, I think the thing that probably would have really sold me if I would have understood, I didn't understand biomechanics to the level that I do now. And I didn't understand that the shortening the range of motion up and squatting just to parallel for so long was going to get me super strong in this area. And then anything outside of that, my body would need to overcompensate in other areas. Yeah. And in, in my case, it was low back, right? Because I got really strong going just to 90 and above. My hips just were weak in any, anything outside of that, that range of motion, which ended up causing all this dysfunction, like just this pulling on my low back all the time. And so I suffered from this like mild, low chronic back pain forever. And it was just, I, I just, and by the way, my cousin, my uncle, I'll have it. So it's like even myself, right? Like, so, oh, it runs in the family. Yeah, yeah, runs in the family. We'll all just have like, and there's probably, obviously there is some some genetics and DNA that's related to this of like, I was I already had maybe a spine that has mm -hmm. a little bit more of like this lower low dorsis type, low You said so, it right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like going on. And so uh, I'm, I probably have a, a propensity towards that. But then I just exacerbated it by, by not ever totally. addressing that. And then what blew my mind was, the, the effort, the hard work of being consistent to letting go of the muscle guy and just becoming the mobility guy for about a year or so of my life, that now all I have to do is do deep squats and it's kept my hips and my low back unbelievably healthy. I don't have any of that stuff ever again. It's crazy. You lived with it for so mm -hmm. long. Yes. And now it's completely gone. gone. Completely. Yeah. I remember when, so I started to figure this out and I haven't always been good with it. I'll be honest. Uh, my ego has definitely got the best of me for certain lifts, uh, especially when I was younger. But I remember when I started to see the, the value of full range of motion because as a kid, um, when I did overhead shoulder press, I initially started out real young, full range of motion, right? Upper chest all the way up. But then I learned through certifications and believe it or not, they would teach us this stuff to stop where the elbows were at 90 degrees. Or I heard, heard other people say this. And I thought, well, that's what I'm gonna do then. Plus I can use more weight. And so I did that for a long time. And it wasn't until... My late 20s, when I don't remember uh, why I did this specifically, it might have been because I read uh, dinosaur training in my early 30s, maybe late 20s. But I, you know, they advocated for these really full range of motion presses. And I remember trying to go all the way down and my shoulder hurt every single time. I had to go way down on weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, way down on weight to the point where I remember I had to check my ego, like, oh my God, this is way lighter. <clears throat> and then my shoulders just developed, like, uh, like accelerated development from this full range of motion. Now I'll never shoulder press uh, any other way, but I've seen people, and that's a basic, you're talking about squat, which is even more complex. I've seen people develop issues with a bench press because they stop short and you have them go down any further know, and you yeah. see all kinds of dysfunction in their shoulders. Yeah, yeah, they just lose all recruitment once they go past like, you know, just like a centimeter past where they are normally comfortable with. Yeah. It's, it's pretty substantial. And then it's like, this is a whole nother uh, exercise down here that you have to build and develop <laughs> from scratch. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God. Yeah. So to so your point, it does, you know, it, it's humbling. And, and so I think a lot of people are, like, well, I'm strong, and so I don't want to, like, you know, go back and realize that there's, like, yeah, glaring weakness here, uh, and and so you know it gets overlooked. And and if you're if you're truly an aesthetic driven person, here's the the best part about this, and you already made the point, just to reiterate it, or uh, uh, is, and and today I don't squat 405 right now. I haven't squatted 405 for a very long time, and that was you know back when I was training really really hard and competitive, like you know. Maybe 315 is what I work out with now. Like that's like, would yeah. be considered like a heavy day for me. And I have better leg development today than I did when I was squatting 405. So I'm able to load the bar less. And I, and, yeah. and because I am more of an aesthetic guy, I can't, I care, but I get this, right? So if you're an aesthetic person and you're an ego guy about how heavy you want to lift, like this is the challenge here is because you're like, you're one, you're afraid you're going to lose aesthetics. Well, that's not true. And then the second part is like, are you okay with, you know, you could do 405, but now you have, you do 315. Yeah. Like you have to be okay with that. And if, and I don't care so long as the aesthetics are, there, cause that's the part that I was, that always drove me was like, I, I wanted to look a certain way. And if you're telling me that I can do less the weight and a full range of motion alleviates chronic pain for me and makes me feel healthier and I, and I have the development that I have mm -hmm. with less effort, like- No, no I used to care about the weight. I yeah. used to literally, <laughs> like, if I had to go down to a certain weight, I'm not going to do that exercise. And I think, a lot, of, and, and I think yeah. a lot of guys are that way. Yeah. I think that's where this, this is the conundrum they get in is they, they end up- they've built already so much strength up in this shortened range of motion. And even though they may in the back of their head know that they should go full range, that requires them to reduce the weight by a hundred plus pounds. 
and they don't want to do this that. This is why home workouts are fantastic. It's, it's you, true. It's a hack. You're man. right. You, you don't have to deal with any of that. You just work on what you need to work on and just throw all that out the window. It's yeah. funny you say that, Justin, because- you They're know, the most egoless workouts. Remember, ever, remember, yeah. I was the one out of us who was like the most staunch about like yeah. wanting to work on the gym. And when I think back to- uh, my training mentality when I said those things, like a lot of it was driven off of, you know, being the most jacked guy in the gym or being able to lift a lot of yeah. weight and the, and the vibe of like, no, who's going to see me in my house. <laughs> Cause I'll get, <laughs> caught, yeah, I'll get caught up in that. Yeah. I'm at a gym and there's a dude. Like, yes. me, I'll be like, Pff. but, <laughs> but at course. home, like it was the best thing ever when I went on that mobility kicks. I don't care. I don't care if I'm doing single leg toe touches. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just me. You know what I'm saying? It's just me by myself. So I could I could do movements that I know were super beneficial to like my hip stability and stuff like that, which you wouldn't catch me do. You would no. never catch me in my stringer out there in, in the in the dumbbell area thrust. doing single single leg toe you know touches. Sal loves them. Yeah. The, the hip thrust. Yeah, yeah I never, I, never do. Yeah, listen, I don't care that it's valuable. <laughs> You've never done a hip Lame thrust in the gym? exercise in like I'm you gonna know go why back, that? You know episodes I back. Listen, like hundred. I don't want to hear you. Episodes I back. I don't want to hear I you. I know dude. they've made this whole it's like. It's because uh, he has glorious glutes. He doesn't care. <laughs> that's why. So I bet hey, do you do calf raises at the gym? <laughs> no. Hell no. Of course. Of course. That's because you got big calves oh, and big I, booty. <laughs> jump bro, but I push sleds, man. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's got Shut big up. calves. Not all of us are gifted, bro. Not yeah. all of us are gifted. You know what I Today's oh. giveaway on YouTube is MAPS Performance. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video uh, in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Strong, Maps Powerlift, both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Started doing, uh, it's so, I've now it's been like at least maybe two months where I've kind of, I've really, really tried to go egoless uh, at the gym in terms of weight I use. Yeah. The ego creeps in other ways. <laughs> but I've been doing, especially for lower body, because I've been really trying to work on mobility. Uh, they, at UFC, they have the the belt squat. Mm. And man, oh, that's fun. Bro, those. Yeah, those are great. that'll pull you down. It's into, probably great for someone like you who oh, work on that. It's incredible because yeah. it pulls you down by your hips. Yeah, so yeah. it forces me. So what I do is I get at the bottom and I put like <clears throat> one plate. That's all I put on there, one plate. And I get in there and I push my knees apart and I sit down as low as I can. And I try to push my knees forward to work on my ankles. And then I come up. And I swear to God, I do 10 reps. And my legs are blasted, bro. Oh, <laughs> ten, yeah. Ten rests of that. Yeah. And I walk All out that like- tension in lower ranges, you normally wouldn't go. Oh, yeah. bro. It works them like crazy. So good. See, I feel like, I mean, I, I guess it was a blessing in disguise that I had the chronic pain because that was- the, You were the, forced. Yeah, there was mm -hmm. that that part of it. Like, had I not done that, I mean, I probably would struggle the same way you do with the, like, the ego side mm -hmm. of it. It's like, well- I'm not really bad. <laughs> Nothing's hurting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that's what probably goes through your yeah. head. You're like, you know, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. fine. Do I really need to get down there it's that just, low? Like, <laughs> it's just, the two, yeah, especially for lower body. Cause I, you know, I, when I get strong, I could lift, I could deadlift the kid. Pretty doesn't well. the, the kid thing has to probably get you a little bit. Cause I feel like that's one of the, my favorite things is that I can sit down in like, oh, a, you know, like, like they call like an Asian squat where I'm like yeah, yeah. just sat down all the way sitting <laughs> yeah, on. Can we say that? Is that yeah, what it's called? Yeah, it's, I think it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. You can say like, it's a positive it's thing, right? Yeah, it's not yeah, a fucking yeah. slide. It's a good you know squat. That's right. Yeah, 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 it's a beautiful squat, right? Yeah. So you could, and I could sit there and I could, I could play with, I could play with Max for 45 minutes. No, I don't, play, I don't play on the floor like that, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. You, you know, you do like a, you old dad like this. Yeah, yeah, that's me, bro. This is, this is like side line. I play a lot of, you gotta do this. You gotta rotate the other yeah, side after yeah, half hour. You, you have to. Your left cheek yeah. falls, falls, falls asleep. Falls asleep. Abduction. You know. <laughs> and there's, a, there's a lot of games lying down. <laughs> that way. Hey, you guys want to jump on me? I just yeah. on the back. <laughs> oh no! You want to bury me in the sand? Yeah, <laughs> that's a fun game. Uh, that's a dad hack too. Uh, for sure. Go play with the kids. You're like I'm tired. Like, oh, I know. Hey, you guys want to bury me? Uh, you fall asleep. <laughs> you ever play a sleep game with your? Or kids? you play like the the hide and seek and you send them away? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. You ever play the sleep game? You ever play that? The sleep game. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey. Pretend like you're sleepy. The first one to get it. To move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like that's a silent. Like, that's like I'll get like ten minutes of sleep. Oh, first one to God. move loses. Yeah, it's hilarious. Oh shit. Yeah, hide and seek is good, but you know when your kids like my my my, my toddler, my my three year old, you got to be careful with him now. He's starting to like really understand how to hide, and then he won't come out. Uh, so yeah, so I'm like you know calling Max, out for him like oh yeah, shit, I know Max you... hides hella good too, and he's quiet and he sits. Will and he just stay out? Yeah, there? yeah, he does. That's it's, scary. Yeah, dude. It scared Katrina one time when he first started. When he, he first started, come out. Yeah, yeah, because he was like really good about hiding. So she was like freaked out over it. <laughs> too good at this, dude. We're going through this phase right now. That I I can't wait to, until you get to this phase. So you could tell me like how this goes for you because it's so. 
Uh, you know, we're getting erections a lot, <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of erections right wow. now. <laughs> yes, he's <laughs> healthy. Yes, he yeah, did. All the time. And he'll do like he'll be sitting there, like we'll be sitting there, and we're like, like we'll be puzzling, we'll be doing something totally innocent. And then I can see he's like, you know, you can see he's messing with it with his one hand, and then all, and then all of a sudden he realizes it's all hard, you know. And then yeah. he just pulls it, Daddy, it's hard. <laughs> I, we'll stop touching it, son. It won't, it won't yeah, be hard like dude. that. So, so Katrina, Katrina was the one who like I, I you know, like, one day, one day. Your kids gonna listen. I was gonna hate me. Dude, you know what? It'll be buried by like a like a thousand episodes. <laughs> Hopefully, it's gonna take them a long time to get here. For you. Your kids haven't even gone through this all too. My Thank kids, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, so obviously Katrina was like the most. Uh, the most. Uh, the most. Uh, the most. 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 That's just you and your private time. You don't do that anywhere else, but at home by yourself. So we've taught him and we've ingrained this now, right? So, and he obviously likes to do it. So it's so funny. It's like, the, this is the new, the new thing. Well, we put him down for bed and, and normally kind of the routine is I read a book from him and then I'll lay there for about, I don't know, five minutes. And then I normally kiss him in bed. And like, if he's laying there and he's, we've already told him enough times, like you don't, you don't play with yourself in front of him. Like, That's your, your private time with that. If he, if I catch him and he's laying next to me, I can see his hands starting to move down there. Then he'll go, uh, daddy, um, you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to play with his pecker. No, no. He wants to play with his pecker, no, so he sits no. me out of the room. Man, he <laughs> yes, dude. I'm like, oh my god, this kid, dude. Put a sock or, on his door. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, hey, what a what a different relationship we have with our kids and our like. You, we didn't talk about oh, any of that yeah, ever yeah. at home. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. God forbid. Yeah. Oh my god, the word yeah. sex was never uttered in my house. <laughs> yeah, ever except for don't. I'm so glad that my wife comes from a family that is extremely open to that. So it was really easy for her to understand that. I was like, no, 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 you just we just communicate to him yeah. that. It's it's his private time. What we want to teach him is that that's not okay in public at school, things like that. He doesn't do that. That nobody else touches that or does yeah. that. That's for him only. But that it's okay. But you do that privately. Don't do that right now. Like so, we, that's how we. And whenever we do it, and then he's literally now got to the place where he likes it. He'll be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go. You guys go to his room by himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can play with, so I can play with this pecker. So like, oh my he's god, it out. I, I'm like, I wasn't. I didn't think this was gonna happen already. Dude, right we're now. not even. We're not even at five yet. We're already getting into that right now. Oh, kids <laughs> are great, man. My my uh, my one year old. Uh, sometimes she won't let me put her down. So she's just, ah, she's like that with her mom too. So I had to go pee the other day and she won't let me put her down. She'll start crying. So I hold her while I'm peeing. Well, now she tries to kick the stream with her foot <laughs> while I'm holding her. So I'm trying to pee and I'm like holding her over here. I remember, remember here. when Max used to do that. I remember when Max used to do that. Like, no, yes. don't do that. Yes. What's going on Dude, here? I remember that. I know. That's funny. <laughs> That's a good time. Hey, I meant to tell you, uh, you know, uh, Nostradamus over here. Uh-oh. Mm. You know, you brought up the uh, the call on the GLP ones and what we were going to start to see. Oh, yeah. I sent an article, pull up your phone on the, the mind pump the thread the three of us together. oh i saw it gnc yes gnc they're coming out with the like categories of supplements to offset and i knew this would happen the mm. negative the potential negative effects did and you, coaching did you see it justin of course. did and you coaching. see it i didn't but so the title the title the, the title of the article is uh gnc becomes first major retailer to launch glp1 support program yeah Mm. Includes and, and supplements. It, it's yes, it's all supplements. Yeah, and by the way, even the coaching—I don't, I don't know if you read or not. All it is is they're they're coaching holding, on supplements. They're just yes, yeah, they're <laughs> they're just teaching their their yeah. their sales reps to, about to, GLP ones, and so to they upsell them. No, what's going to happen is you're going to see cat, all, categories of supplements to help with digestion because uh, GLP ones delay gastric uh, emptying. You're going to see supplements to help prevent muscle pr muscle muscle breakdown or yep. prevent you know catabolic effects, Probably muscle fiber. loss. That's right, hundred yep. percent. Yep. And I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if they came out with uh, supplements. Electrolytes would probably be another one. If they came out with supplements mm -hmm. to help with appetite for the early stages, because some people's appetites get so crushed. That one's a little bit iffy. instead of just yeah. I don't think they'll because they'll just. I think they'll eventually. They, so here's the numbers on some of this, right? <laughs> So it is estimated 130 million Americans currently live with the condition eligible to be treated by GLP-1 agonists, and up to 70 million Americans may use semi-glutide by 2028. So 70 million people, they're projected uh, to do that by 2028. So in the yeah, next this, four years. This, this is taking over. This is going to crush every other pharmaceutical. What did they say? How much was that uh, company? Was it out of Sweden or the, it was a 
Oh, that that was responsible for Zempek, I believe. Was uh, their main Novo Nordisk flagship. Nordisk? Is it Novo Nordisk? Yeah, yeah, Nord- that's it, it, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, Novo Nordisk. I yeah, think. say that three times fast. They're uh, and by the way, you know that they're selling it for like ten times as much in the U.S. than they are in other countries. Yeah. Uh huh. You know why? By the way, a lot of people don't know this. You know, international mm-hmm. supplement, excuse me, uh, pharmaceutical companies. Well, because they <laughs> sell their products in countries where um, they have socialized medicine. They'll make up the difference in profits by selling them for <laughs> far higher in the U.S. Yes. So in other words, people, because I've made, I've, I've talked to people about this and said, you know, even though our medical system is absolutely terrible, it's the worst combination of socialism and, and capitalism you could imagine. A lot it of really the, is when you think about that. Like our, well, they, we've taken the worst. Our, it, our, like we've our, just terrible. Our, that's such a good way to put it too, by the way, for people that don't understand that. Like the, all the worst things, whether you're a you're capitalist or socialist type of person, whichever side of the aisle you land on. We made Frankenstein. Each of those have their, it's ugly head, right? There's yeah. the ugly head of capitalism. There's an ugly head of socialism. Yeah. Obvious. I think both parties can agree on that. Cronyism and tyranny. And our <laughs> pharmaceutical industry is the worst of both. Yeah. It literally is. Yeah, it the is, whole medical it, industry. It's, like, it's, it's got the controlled aspects of social Below to like the price, all the greed, the greed Listen. and the manipulation from capitalism. It's like anytime, the worst. Anytime you see like a, a market that doesn't make yep. sense, like you're in college and they're like, you have to buy this book. You're like, I have to, okay. And then you look it up, it's like four hundred dollars for a book. Mm. Like, when does book cost four hundred dollars? Like, anytime you see something like that, or like you get an ambulance ride. Oh, I had to take an ambulance, and I went straight from my house to the ho- to the hospital, which was a mile away. It's like five thousand dollar bill. <laughs> yes. How is that possible? That's how you know that you have completely distorted the signals of the market by injecting strange regulations and guaranteed money and stuff like that. But anyway, a lot of them innovate and and they generate their revenue by charging us a shit ton of money. Yeah. So they can because insurance companies here work, the way they work and everything. Yeah, because it, so is the is the inevitable going to happen? Right, which is it'll eventually have to drive the prices down. Right. Oh, they're all going to go down for sure because the competition is exploding. Yeah. And because- the compound pharmacies offer it bingo. for not even like ha- like a quarter of the price. Yeah, look- And it, they it, can't stop that, right? It's a $1,200 right. or $1,300- Cause, cause they're, Because they're trying to lobby against that right now, right? No, good luck. Well, no, they, no, these are, these are compound yeah. pharmacies are making peptides. And so these are peptides. They're not pharmaceutical drugs, uh, which is different. So for example, semaglutide is the GLP-1- hormone peptide signal that we have and they've just added i believe some amino acids to the chain so that it lasts a long time so we inject it once and then you have it, it stays for the whole week or whatever but you know when it comes to peptides uh, the laws are are different I, I, from my understanding it, they you could just change it a little bit it would still have the same effect so it'd be a weird cat and mouse you know type of game they'd have to completely change how they regulate stuff but for now a $1200 cycle which would be $1200 a month of a GLP one brand name, you could get the same exact component like two fifty generic for like you know three hundred bucks or something yeah, like that a month. Yeah. So like it's a huge difference, and they're not really covered. They're not covered by insurance right now, right? I think yeah. you have to pay out of pocket. Yeah, regardless. Although I know I did hear that you could get insurance uh, to pay for it. Maybe the qualifications, like if you're a diabetic and you're overweight. Oh, by some, there you go. There you go. Then you can. Yes, yes. then you but can. But not just to lose weight. No. I think you have to be diabetic. At the yeah, time. yeah. You have to. I think because yeah. originally you started. So it, you know, GLP ones have been around for twenty something years. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know. And they were they just they were solely only used for diabetics. Yeah, and so it's just that. They, and I think the original one. I don't know if they ever made. Uh, if they ever had the short acting, I think the first ones were probably very short acting. We had to inject them several times a day, probably or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would which guess. is not you know, obviously. I mean, I'm well. really, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm super pumped that all of you are going to test it because I think just hearing everybody's differing opinions. Well, I told you, I'm microdosing. It'll mine. vary for sure. Yeah, I know. I, I just ordered mine, so I'll be uh, reporting on that for sure. Yeah, I just, I just think it's been. I mean, I, I get so many messages right now, and it's and overwhelmingly positive, right? Just people just appreciating uh, the, the, the me sharing wrote, yeah. the journey and the process through it, and also treating it the way I am too. Yeah. Like that, like I'm not, not doing it like Adam. I am doing it to maximize. <laughs> 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 the benefits of minimize the negatives. Yeah, I'm right. not doing this to be the av- like to, to test what the average person would do. Adam already did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm already the, I'm already the full. You're like so my bodybuilder uh, peeps. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got the formula. That you know, and I know you speculated that it could be it'll make its way into bodybuilding. Oh, I and, bet and, you it is. And, and it will. It will like it from the microdose perspective because 
the the challenge is still getting enough calories. Like one of the things that makes you know what or what I liked about competitive bodybuilding is you know ramping the metabolism up to be roaring yeah. and then having all this lean body mass. But what comes with that is how difficult it is to maintain that. I mean, what I mean, I, I remember I used to get the hydrostatic weigh all the time and I I track my body fat test. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many times I, you know, bulked up to 230, 240 pounds, but how many different times the lean body mass was different because there's a real art to, oh, yeah. you know, just eating in a surplus enough to build muscle. And yeah. then when you go into your cut, yep. maintaining, or I don't know how many times I thought I did better because I trained harder or did this thing. And then I come back down on my cut. And I'm like, oh my God, I went through that whole bulk cycle to oh, cut to be two pounds less muscle like that's like <laughs> that's that happened not, all the time yeah, like all, to me like so to someone who, work, yeah. who thinks he knows what he's doing right like so imagine how many people that like happens all the time because it's such a delicate dance to be in a caloric deficit and not lose muscle yeah. with with the body fat i think one time i bulked this as, as a kid in my 20s i think i gained 28 pounds on an aggressive bulk, almost 30 pounds and i think if i'm not mistaken my lean body mass gain was like eight I remember I looked at the numbers and I was like, "Oh my god, I've had way worse." I'm than like, that. "Whoa, yeah, dude!" Yeah. Especially I after the cut, majority body fat. Especially after the cut. Well, the cut, like, because I've because I've bulked up and maybe I only gained like eight or ten pounds, right. and then I cut back down, and then I'm like, "It's the same." Yeah, you <laughs> no, know, yeah. so you're like six months of like hard dieting, like bulking <laughs> and then cutting, and it's like, "Oh, cool!" I ended up in the same fucking spot I was six months ago. <laughs> I could have just been cruising. I mean, <laughs> that's what really changed my attitude about the way we were taught to cut and bulk. Oh, for, yeah. is I I still think it's it tricks you though because you yes. can get bigger. Yes, and stronger. There's yes, yeah. There's there's something to be said about the strength you gain from just being in a calorie surplus yeah. outside of the the extra lean body mass. So same lean body mass, yeah. Just bumping your calories makes you strong, dude. Higher calorie, oh, yeah. water. You're yeah. holding in a bunch of water yeah. in your muscles too. So, so you your get, pumps are crazy. Yeah, yeah. So you get this this visual effect. You get incredible workouts because yeah. your body's loaded full of all glycogen and water, yeah. and you just yeah. So you get this uh, this misconception. And by the way, I'm really noticing that right now. So I told you guys the other day, I just recently tracked and I'm only landing about 23, 2400 calories, but I feel like I'm getting a little stronger. Oh, good. Just because I'm already coming back out of the oh, really, yeah. really low calorie. Well, you came out, you were, you, you had gotten down so low though with your strength, <clears throat> yeah. right? You were, because mm -hmm. your calories are so low. Yeah. And so what I'm interested to see is like, man, can I, you know, just. Build without gaining. Yes. Can fat? I just, can I just. You can't. You know why you can? I'm going to, I'm going to say this first because I want people listening to get a little context. Because you're not going to be going anywhere you've never been before a million times. I'm sure that's a huge. Yeah, so if it was, if you were building to a new level, that would be very different. But you're you're gaining back what you've had. I mean, for people don't know, you you've been that size, leaner, bigger, yeah. like crazy muscularity, like you know, ten times at least yeah. in your life. So going back to it's going to be that's what I'm thinking, possible. right? And so it's kind of interesting because another thing, like Katrina was asking me, and she's like, "You're so lean now." She's like, "Are you going to keep taking it?" I go, yeah, I want to keep, because I, I want to ride this out through the whole process and kind of see yeah. what it what it's like. And I, now that I do feel my appetite coming back, that makes me feel better. Because if I was just like falling off and like and then getting unhealthy borderline because yeah. I'm just losing so much muscle and losing so much weight, yeah, I, I would reverse out. I don't need, I mean, I don't need to, exp I don't need to show people that far. Are, are, are you doing full dose, Justin? Or are you going to go like micro? <clears throat> yeah. You should, bro. You're pretty fat. You can call <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I got some, I got some padding, but it helps with my strength. I'm pretty damn strong, so uh, I'm extra uh, cocky with this lean face now. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> he's a, he's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guy. Whatever skinny yeah. face. Yeah, just gonna start bullying you pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just call me skinny. <laughs> so, are you, so are you a micro or full? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm go, tossing it around. Go, go big. He's already micro. I'll probably go big to start and then yeah. uh then see what happens yeah experience it for what Dude, it if is. i become the heaviest guy of the show that'll yeah. be the first time in history <laughs> i'll probably be insanely athletic all of a sudden oh yeah. you know because like yeah what it, was your like most athletic body weight for you i mean you're a big dude though yeah when i was um okay when i was in high school i was like a junior i was like 185 which you think that was your most athletic? no no no, no. Oh, i was, I was just saying like that was the skinniest i was oh, oh, oh gotcha uh i think it's like 215 is like Good, but probably two of five is probably the best. Really, just I, agile and that's, funny. Yeah, that's where I feel the I best. I was too. fast as hell when I was two of five. Wow! But, but then I had to gain like thirty pounds on top of that, and then it was four. I was two forty when I played football, uh, and then it was. I just felt so slow and like. I mean, I had a lot of like strength and snap, but I just couldn't 
<laughs> the stamina and his movement was just clunky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I felt like that. I felt like you could hear like just things in slow motion as I was going. Just... I think my athletic like my I was gonna ask athletic... you, what do you think your most agile weight oh, is? Oh, if I was gonna be agile, it'd be 180, 185. Wow, so. that low. Yeah, yeah probably 185. Yeah, yeah. I think low two, 205 is what For I you? think. Yeah, yeah, 205 was what I felt real, even though I wasn't like doing athletic things, but when I did nationals. I hit stage at 203 and I just felt good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt good at that because I could be ripped and be muscular. So I'm still strong and like powerful. Mm -hmm. So probably around, if I was training like an athlete, probably 203, 205, that body weight feels, yeah. which by the way, I haven't, I, I just, the lowest, I'm at the lowest right now, 210. Oh, wow. I haven't gotten lower than that. Wow. So it's pretty interesting. Wow. I thought for sure. I, I might have to start plummet. getting more agile and fast because I'll go to the park with my kids and my, my three year old, I can catch him easily, but. At some point, I'm not going to be able to catch him. Hey, so I need to like, I don't want to, you know what I mean? It might be so, dangerous Hey, situation. so I saw this dad video and I want to do this. I'm going to start this with Max this year or next year. Obviously, he's not that competitive right now, but I'm going to start this where this dad, every, on the birthday of his son, they they race, oh. foot race. Just to like, as, as, and they video it and stuff like that yeah. to like oh keep God. track of like, what age could you beat dad? And That's like, pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a, like a 50 yard kids, dash By the or time kids are like 10, 11, they're fast. Like yeah. a, a fast 10 year old kind of, they're fast. Yeah. They're pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'd say um, I was pretty, I was definitely faster before high school than I probably was in high school. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just was, in terms of quickness. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, it'd be, but it'd be fun to just to do that and a good goal. Like it'd be cool to know my son's birthday's coming up in three months. I'm like, I better get on the treadmill. Start running again. <laughs> so you gotta hold, gotta hold that yeah, record. I'm worried, dude. Like, uh, I was, I was yeah, wrestling. your boys probably give you a run for your money I right was now. Wrestling them, and I'm like, you know, normally I could just easily just one hand, you know, put them in their place, but uh, I mean, it's it's to the point now where they're grabbing, you know, fingers oh, and yeah. like putting back. And I'm like, ah, oh! like like Everett almost submitted me because <laughs> he got a hold of my fingers and then he was oh. yanking, and then I I didn't expect it. And his his grip is like getting oh, there. I'm like, ah, yeah. Well, yeah, little gymnast, dude. I was like, oh man, I still That's play the, motivating me to get. <laughs> oh no, I still play the, the game where I, I see if like I see if they can open my finger. But I did that with my wife too. She's pretty strong though. She almost broke my finger off. But I did that with her for a little while. I'm like, try and pull it, and then she kind of got it. Okay, <laughs> okay, you beat my one finger. Yeah. Yeah. I still got the mask though, you know. Like I smother. Like if you're gonna do that little, like, I mean, if you're, you're also not being a great, hey, as yeah, especially being not. older dads that we are, right? If you can make it to your kid being 18 and still still put it down on them strength speed all that stuff that ah uh, you're fucking doing that it, was bro. the first you're, you're doing goal, it dude. in my opinion that, yeah. that was the first time i submitted my dad i, I caught him as submission he tapped out i was 18 and then we, mm -hmm. he was like oh yeah good for you and i remember being all sad like oh yeah <laughs> like I, now you're a man yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i don't like that i did that that made me sad anyway i gotta i gotta tell you guys uh i looked up the difference you know i've talked about the difference between grass-fed meat and uh you know, conventional grain meat yeah. or conventional meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked up um, fish, wild caught salmon versus farm salmon. Do you know how big the difference is well, on their macros? Yeah. Let me, let me it, hear it. It's, uh, it's pretty wild. Uh, just, so I'm going to read just the macros to you guys so you can see the, the protein macros change big time. Really? The amount of fat in a, okay. So 113 grams acid profile. Huh? Yes. Well, and that too. So 113 grams of salmon. So farmed versus uh, wild. Okay. So this is probably, I think it's like eight ounces. I don't know. I don't know how many uh, 113 grams. 16 is, but. is an ounce. So 16 goes into 139. That's, a, that's about, that's about, about uh, eight ounces. That sounds right. Eight, Something six, like that. 48. Yeah, okay. that's, that's pretty close. Maybe yeah. seven. Okay. Anyway, eight ounces. So both of them about the same. Did it, did it, 130? 113. 113. Oh, 113. Yeah, little, little, okay. less okay. little less than that. Six ounces, right? Okay. No, five five to six ounces? I'll give you the exact It's got to be six. Everybody, Three, almost four ounces. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so name that. Okay. So both of them, same protein, about 22 grams of protein. The fat, 15 and farmed, five and wild caught. Wow. Huh. For the same size, five. Way, uh, way smaller. Yeah. That's cr Or less, I should say. That's wait, wait, crazy. wait, wait, wait. Wild is lower fat. Way lower mm -hmm. fat. Way lower fat. And the fatty acid profile is is much better. More omega threes, far less omega sixes. Whereas far, whereas farmed, a lot of the extra fat is omega sixes. I mean, it, and it's, you know why? Because they intentionally just fatten them yeah, up exactly. in the farm. They well, just feed them all that bullshit. And they have less. Yeah, exactly. They just feed yeah. them all that junk just to get them fatter weight wise, yep. so they can sell them for more well, money. Wild is typically more lean and in interesting. But and and the antibiotics. A lot of them use antibiotics because they have to. They keep them in Bro, such they, tight containers. Yeah, yeah, their yeah. sex they're changes confined. in there. You know that for fish too. Yes, I thought it was just the frog. No, the, sa <laughs> the salmon will do the same. Salmon, salmon, salmon. Sex oh, is known to change inside fish. those farms also. Really? Yes. You can't be good, dude. 
I feel like there's a conspiracy theory there somewhere, Justin. There is. No. There is. Oh, you really? think so? It's like they, if you eat the, the, the gay the frogs, sex changing it's a, yeah. fish, <laughs> what happens? Thing, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, isn't it the same thing? No, it's not the same yeah, thing yeah, with yeah. The, the water. The water is changing the frog sex. No, and, that was that's um, a chemical. That's a chemical. Look up Alex like, salmon, salmon, salmon to change sex in salmon farms. I'm yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's some kind of an adaptation. Doug, look trait. up sexy salmon and click images. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look up sex farms. And no, no. Big lips. <laughs> sex farms? Sex farms. <laughs> you start doing all kinds of wordplay on everything, Doug. Wow. I'm a farmer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I farm you. Uh, it's an island. What you got for me, Doug? I'm not finding about salmon. I'm finding about other fish. Okay. Oh, maybe other fish. There not- is a fish in Okinawa that does that. Mm. Okay. But I'm not yeah, seeing just, salmon. I make stuff up. I'm just making shit up. Yeah, I don't have anything to contribute. I just make something up. That's how we fuck kids. Oh, shit, I don't have anything to add right here. Hey, did you guys hear those fish actually change their sex? <laughs> salmon flip flop and sex. Oh, but anyway, that's going to be my new thing. Every time I have nothing to contribute, I'm here's why make, I brought that up. a big lie up. Hold on. Here's, here's why I brought that up. Because Butcher Box has wild caught fish. You got to mess up my commercial. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's hey, one for the bus. Hey, yeah. actually, you know, no, they, they do. That's they have all. It's all wild. I tell you fish. what, I, uh, I'm going to put that. They on. sell salmon as little pack, like uh, individual packs too, that are frozen. Really I've had. It. I've actually. It's actually really time. good. Does she? Yeah. yeah. I wish I could say I eat them too, but I don't. you need to eat. Food, well, though. one of the things I I do notice. I'm taking pills. Remember, I told you guys before about the <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Dude. He's taking fish oil. That's why chicken right. nuggets and fish oil. Just have the fish, bro. It works, dude. Did you imagine that? They, and no, the, their fish is actually fantastic. Super and good. Now that I realize that uh, fish has actually become really like a go-to for me because the digestion is the oh. easiest. I I told you um, I'm minimal on the steak. Um, Still, way huh? way like, more, yeah, way more white meat and fish. Are fish, you taking creatine by the way? I am. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, you paused. I almost got angry. Well, I paused because <laughs> I missed days. Right, like I didn't I didn't oh. take it yesterday, but I took it, if I train, I definitely take it. Okay, because um, I remember to. And I try and do it every day. So okay. maybe you can stay on stay on that on me there for yeah. I just take it every day. You should be taking a, a good amount too, because you're not eating no red meat. Your protein's lower. Yeah. Yep. And, and muscle preservation. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Anyway, yeah. speaking of cool <laughs> conversations, yeah. uh, the po- our podcast went up with Deloney. Have you guys read the YouTube comments? I, are they positive. good? Oh yeah, yeah dude. People really. Lo- I mean, the guys. He always. Yeah. Well, he he's <clears throat> he went to like the top of the charts and podcasts in a very short period of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what was he saying? He said it had to do with they were able to share some of his clips of his calls and stuff. Shorter and form. Yeah. Yes. Really, people really doing well. Discover the guy. Yeah. I mean, the last time when he was here, that inter- that interview that you're talking about right now, um, he said something very profound to me that I Katrina and I have already implemented this, and I think. And I think subconsciously there was times where we actually kind of did this already, which I think to a testament to our communication as a couple, but like hearing him say it and, and, and present it the way he did uh, is now like her and I are like, that's like an exercise that we do, which is simply just asking your partner, like, what's your, uh, what's your picture of today? Mm -hmm. And I just think it's such a simple thing to do. That do you do that in the morning? Any anytime we're gonna do something like yes, yeah. today's a normal day. She's got. Oh, I see. So we're gonna go out to dinner, and then you say anything oh, out to dinner, that. a movie. We're, I remember we're, when you we're said traveling. That. We're going to our. Right. We're going to go to our friend's uh, house. This no, weekend. that was beautiful. I remember that. It is. It's yeah. such a simple thing to be. Because then like, you can see you what they're excited. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, just partner. from the little bit of time we've already practiced it, you'd be wild. You'd be surprised, like just how I mean, different. How different your view is on it, and just by co- having that conversation ahead of time, you're like, oh, you wanted to leave that early. I I thought we were gonna stay all the way till this time. It cuts out all the assumptions. It does. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were just going to go do this. I'm sure it's also great when you're going out with, with yes, your anything, of the day, the anything evening. you're doing outside. I'd say like, you're, I want to go be relaxed and ha- be a chill. Yes. Night. And she's like, well, actually, I was going to try and I wanted to dress up, and well, you know, it's a good thing we're talking about. Wait, this. even we did this right. weekend. We actually had no plans, and uh, we and we just have finally had no company, no plans, no nothing. And I said, you know, what's your what's your picture for you know what for Saturday? What do you want it to look like? She's like, I don't want to have anybody over. She's like, I'm I'm tired. We've had tons of guests. We had this, that. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad you said that because I was going to have my cousins stop by and do this. Like, So I'm telling you, like, it's been- How much we assume, right? From the other it, day, Yes. The other time. And you know, and how many times does something so stupid and little like that cause one partner to be upset You're, because about Because you have expectations exactly. that are not met. She has an expectation yeah. that, hey, I thought we agreed we're doing nothing on Saturday and you invited someone over or you decided to go do this. And I thought we were- yeah. and, and, and you know what? And her just, me hearing her communicate how important it was her to rely, it's like- Oh, okay, I got you. I got yeah. the message. Like we could do, I can do that. It's not a big deal. I can have wow. him come another day or do something. Yeah. It's like wild 
how powerful that is. He's got so many nuggets like that. He's got a great, his show is great. When he answers mm. some of the calls that come in, you're like, oh, wow, what are you going to say, dude? Like, my husband fell in love with this therapist. Or, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. Yeah. You know, and he, he helps him. He does a phenomenal job with that. You yeah. know, since we're on the talking about partners and this and that and also talking about family, I wanted to ask you about your cousin and Get Dynasty and what's going on. What's the oh, dude with them? Uh, um, they're, they're crushing. They're, that company is extremely disruptive because before that in order to get a trust you had to meet with a lawyer you had to so you had to spend hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars and there were laws that made that the only way to do it then COVID happened and there were changes in laws to where like like uh, for example <coughs> doing telemedicine now is far more possible because some of the laws that uh, that were passed during COVID to make it a lot easier or whatever well, they figured out a way to where you could do robo signing with these trusts. So this is why they're able to offer a free trust. So people are like, how are they offering a free trust when you go to their website? It's because they figured this out. You don't have you can sign anywhere and it's completely legal and you don't need that that lawyer to do it. And it's all set up for you. So, so that's that's how that works. But I was asking him some questions about these. He says that um, about trust in general. He says, when you buy a house, always put it in a trust. And I and, and I forgot about this. This is true. If you die, your house goes into probate, and mm -hmm. then they figure out what happens. And that costs a lot of money I, versus yeah. a trust that's <coughs> taken care of right away. I, don't, I think it was the last time that we talked about them. Um, I don't know if our YouTube team or if whatever, but I remember uh, Jerry was the one who actually shared that clip with me. There's this lady who does like videos on like trust and things like that. And she was sharing her story of like how her husband died mm -hmm. and, yeah. and she's still alive. Her son's still alive. And even they had to go through all that probate and everything, even in that situation of like getting, how getting frustrating. I know. Imagine how, especially if you're in a bad situation, yeah, like of course, if you're, it's if you're already, the that's already traumatic. Well, not only that, but you're the breadwinner, you die. Maybe your, your family's living relatively paycheck to paycheck and now they got to wait. Yeah. You know, and, and go through presidents cost money. Which, by the way, Stupid. statistically speaking, that is way more likely than not. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, have, have you guys seen the statistics on that? Like, yeah, it's like, like I want to how what percentage of of uh, widows and their children going to poverty when the when the dad. You know, well, I think I, another really stat bad. is, uh, and again, fact check me that I'm not just making stuff up again. Doug, uh, I think seventy percent of people have less than a thousand dollars in their savings. No way. Yeah, it's crazy. Are they number. counting babies wow. and children though? <laughs> <laughs> is that everybody? <laughs> uh, I think it's adults. I think it's of course. It I is. think I think it's, I think it's <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> so yeah, see it. What see what percentage it is? That's now. How do they do that? Is it an average, or are they looking at? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I don't Actually, know. couldn't. What do you got? What do you got? Stat wise, it says that most up. Americans have less than a thousand dollars in their personal savings. Most, yeah. Most. Which I I thought I heard this, this stat was over seventy or eighty percent. Don't even have. Yeah, that. it says sixty nine percent. So wow. around 70%. See, when you're talking there. about numbers, you're on point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so not, salmon. <laughs> not salmon. Not <laughs> salmon. The, the biology I, or physiology or anything else that's important. Money and numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he remembers <laughs> everything. I heard <laughs> another interesting, because you know how it's always told that like these divorce numbers are so crazy. Yeah. It's like half or like, oh, yeah, this. Yeah. And, I've heard people challenge that. Yeah, because the, the one people get married, they get divorced. It's the repeat divorce person oh, that, in, that distorts that the numbers in that? yeah oh and so that's distorted it's really not as high as you think did you do you know that you know that your odds of getting divorced again are so much higher yeah. if you got divorced once and you get remarried exactly. you, you broke, think people you broke the seal lesson? you broke the <laughs> seal <laughs> <laughs> it's, i've done this before it's like it's a it's like when you're waiting to get married to have sex then you have sex like oh it's on now that's true, <laughs> you already yeah. broke the seal <laughs> that's uh i that's, just thought that was interesting because it too that was like the whole childbirth thing too yeah it was a little bit you're right, because there were people that lived till they were 60s and 70s mm -hmm. a long time ago. It's just they count everybody in there, and babies used to die or children would die. Yeah, all the time. a little more frequently. That's so. yeah, that's wild. Yeah, the, the divorce. It's one, funny though because he, he, I've I've heard that too. The the challenge of that, but it it sure does feel like it. Just look at your own circle of friends that have been married. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? I mean, when you look at your friends, do are most all of them remarried or get married or or divorced? Like, what's your what's your personal no, I'm, stat? I'm, my, well, my family would be who the people I would know. I'm. <clears throat> Uh, one of the only divorced people, I would say. My I mean, I, yeah. I mean, in terms of friends, it's probably, I would say, maybe like 30, 40% mm. are probably divorced. What about you, Doug? Yeah, my family, if I think about my family, really no divorces except for a couple. Mm. And, so then and, maybe it is way inflated, bro. Yeah. Why Why do you have a lot? I have probably half. I'd say at oh, least okay. that. Yeah, I'd okay. say half of my friends that have been in a marriage and then divorced. Yeah. And, you know, so, I mean, especially if they got married before 25. Mm -hmm. so I have uh, my friends that are together now are my friends that waited to get married till after 30 mm -hmm. my friends that waited to get after 30 are all in, in marriages still for now 
But all my ones that are that got married before twenty five, mm-hmm. almost all those got divorced. Yeah, your decision making skills aren't that great. Totally at that age, it's just hard. You're, I mean, and then you're, and you really go through a lot of changes. It's not that you, if you're not like working together. I, it's impossible. It could be. It could, I'm sorry. It isn't impossible. It makes it a lot more difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's always there's always exceptions to the rule, right? There's somebody who's listening right now. They got married at 18. They have the most amazing, beautiful relationship, and I think that's awesome. You find a partner who's growth minded, and you grow together. I think it's incredible. But so many people are. I mean, you guys know that. Like, you know, it's always it just made me think of something too. Whenever you talk to friends that are, and I know you just hung out with like friends that go all the way back. Uh-huh. You know, the people that used to say things like, "You're so you've changed so much. You're so different than what you Aren't were in you high supposed school." To? I know that's right. Yeah. My always response is like, "Thank God, yeah. I'm not the same kid." I imagine was. like you're well, exactly the same. You, you yeah, the same person. That is not a compliment, bro. I was actually going to bring that up because earlier in the beginning of this podcast, you talk about how fat I am. And like, I was like, <laughs> man, I feel so great. <laughs> being out here. I was like, you know, and not to not to knock my friends or anything, but it was just they kept saying that. <laughs> they were so, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, you know, there's some pounds to lose and they hey. they admitted it. Uh, you know, and I was like kind of riffing with them with their diet and like, you know, exercise advice, you know, just because I actually care about them. You know, if it was somebody that was just like you know, that gets kind of hard when it's like, you're always the guy that's like, has to give the advice. Yeah. I'm always like, I don't want to give you advice. You know, listen to my show. Uh, yeah. But uh, they didn't really know. Uh, they, they knew that I was doing this, you know, in the podcast, like existed and whatnot, but they had no idea like about any of the actual like reach we have or mm-hmm. anything. And so we were like walking around downtown in Chicago and like, you know, this guy like stops me and I, I saw like a couple people that recognized me, which was great. But like, you just seen their faces are like confused. <laughs> Dude, what was that? You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. It just happens. So, this happens like, you know, multiple times. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's not, I'm used to it. I mean, I mean you know. <laughs> like every day it's yeah. like exhausting, but you know, no big deal. I told you my friends, my friends all trip out like that too. It's weird. It's, they get all weird, weird about it. And then I have one friend who wants to see it so bad and it, like, he misses it always. <laughs> by like five minutes. I think it's the funniest thing ever. Yeah. I just told them, I was like, yeah, I paid that guy. Yeah. 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 To do that yeah, in yeah. front of you guys. Yeah. Just to flex on you guys. It, what does that what say? Like hardest to become a prophet in your own city or whatever? Yeah. Like the last people to really, like whenever you do anything, I think this is the case. Yeah. It's so, always the people who know So you. Katrina said just recently, she noticed this. She's like, it was just, we just had a big family birthday or whatever, then like all at dinner. And she's like, have you noticed a, a, a difference in the family lately? And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? And she's like, I just feel like they all like hang on every word you say now. Like before it was never like that. It was always like I would give advice or I'd say things and it was just like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> just whatever. You're like elbowing each other. Adam's about to talk. Yeah, yeah. She's like, <laughs> that's what she says. She said it, it felt like that. She's just like, everybody was like. No, ask him about Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you guys, dude, ask me about Tom Hanks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> don't, don't eat that transgender Just sandwich. everybody off. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Just it's lost all I'm never bringing yeah, up Tom Hanks again, again, okay? I promise. Yeah, uh, she says that. I don't, so I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, maybe it's like, the, what, maybe it's the whole business thing. It reaches a certain level. Now, now because of other people, of course. other people now, because there are, I'm now at a place now with all of my family that they've all been approached multiple times yeah. by somebody who's like, finds out like, what? So wine pump Adam yeah. is, is your, is your cousin or your uncle or your nephew. So now that that's happened to everybody at least once or twice now, now there is that like, now I have street cred in my own family. See, in my, yeah, <laughs> in my family, I have, that. took a while. Yeah. I have like aunts and uncles who, you know, will, will come up and be like, yeah, you remember when I used to tell you about that back in the day? And I'm like, yeah. And it's just true that they did. So, cause now I'll talk about certain things are like, you used to debate me about that back when you were a kid. I'm like, well, it turned out you're right. You know? <laughs> yeah. About, you know, this and about wins, that. I guess. Seven, yeah. my, I have an uncle that's a, this Chinese herbal medicine. He's always been super skeptical of like, you know, Western certain, medicine. certain things in, in Western medicine. I, had an, I have an aunt that's the same thing. So they've been saying certain things to me and I was always the guy on the other side. So anyway, yeah, you guys are right. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. That, that worked out pretty well. But hey, speaking of, by the way, um, since we're talking about social media and stuff, do you guys see that Russell, what's his name? Russell? Yes. He, he got we, baptized. Baptized. He got baptized. Wow. wow. You know, he's always been searching, right? He's, he's a spiritual guy. Spiritual, yeah, he's yes. a spiritual guy for yes. a long time. Yeah. And now he chose to go in this direction. And this can't, I, I, I can't help but think, I'm seeing all these like, quote unquote, influencers who are um, getting baptized and uh, moving towards uh, Christianity, and it seems like there's it's not as taboo. It's almost or, like at a protest, like in opposition. That, that's what, that what's, that's, that's what, what it, it feels that's like. That's what to it me. is. It's be, I feel like we are rebellious humans by nature, and everything's going so crazy over and here. And I yeah. think that we obviously were founded on a lot of those morals and principles, and so we it feels and, like it's being and we're at, we're at the age of 
you know, the, the coming out of that, right? I'd say our parents grew up in a very conservative time yeah. to live, right? Our parents and our grandparents, for sure. We grew up in a much more, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, like rebellious kind yeah. of like trend of, a, and then it feels like it's coming back the other way now. And so I think we're just on the, the front end of that. It's really growing do. a lot in different categories, but one category is Generation Z, men, young men are starting to move. Uh, I've seen some some stats in that direction. You know who I think hmm. is caused, if, if this is a, indeed a revival, because it feels like it, or this kind of growth towards uh, Christianity with popular culture, I should say, I feel like Jordan Peterson played a huge role in that. Of course he did. Sure. Because he, he, he even now struggles with his faith. You can even ask him questions. He kind of like, oh, he's not sure how to answer. His wife just became uh, Catholic. She just got baptized. But you could tell he's he struggles. But he's always talked about which I think was a, was a, uh, one of the reasons why it got through to so many people because he was speaking from like a, here's the wisdom in it and here's why we think the way we do. And here's the, well, and I think a lot of kids, a lot of young men in He in brought in, brought back a lot of the wisdom, yeah. the intellectual perspective because I feel like the intellectual side was thrown out. They did such a good job of dismissing anything religious when you when we grew up uh, because in school it was like, well, there's no science there. Yeah. Everything's scientific and yeah. it's, you know, and um, and I and I understood that from that perspective. But there was nobody like voicing the, the brilliance and the yeah. wisdom and yeah. a lot of these um, you know lifelong teachings. lessons and teachings yeah. that uh, really um, people benefit from. So I yeah I do feel like people like him mm -hmm. and there's a few other examples out there that are really. Doing he, I a good would job. I would argue or agree with you that he is arguably probably the most influential. He was the, he was like the spark. And the reason why I agree so much with that is I remember when we first found him years ago and watching his, one of his videos on YouTube. One of the things that I was I thought was so fascinating was I would I read all the comments. And there was literally almost a 50-50 split of atheists and believers. Yeah. And all like equally. This was profound. Yes, this was, yeah, yes. Yeah. People, nobody was, yeah. you know, and you know, that's, God, that's crazy on on, on YouTube to find a two polarizing a view yep. type of people. It's like, it's like Republicans and Democrats all coming to one like person who's talking about something and then they all agreeing yeah. on something. That doesn't happen very often. So to see that he pulled from the atheist side and pull from the believer side and both groups were like this is profound mm -hmm. this isn't this is great i thought that was like that blew me away In incredible and he just communicates the wisdom and then kind of talks about how this is what this this opened me up more than well there's a few things that opened me up but one of them was this was later on but one of them that did was um just we, because we're value driven driven creatures right we make choices we make conscious choices that means we have a hierarchy of values. So we are literally, our top value is literally what we worship. We literally, so whether you believe in the metaphysical or not, it's very clear that behaviorally and psychologically, we have to worship something. Something's at the top of your value. And so what ends up happening when you don't specifically choose like, oh, this is, this is the right path. This is the wise path. You're going to end up worshiping something. Uh, and it's not going to be something good. It's typically something material. Yeah. That made me go, blew my mind. Like, oh, I see. So here I am thinking I'm worshiping nothing, but the truth is something, probably money or pleasure. Yeah, something is your top priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. People you know? get so defensive when you say they that. They do, too. but it's just, <laughs> listen, what, your actions show what you worship, not what you say. It's right. your actions. Everybody can agree on that, right? You can say, I believe in you know, protecting the environment, or I believe in helping the homeless, but then you follow them around and look at their yeah, actions you can, and you, you can, can see also if you're get true. In the, the semantics of worship and then people the, try and debate it sure, from that angle sure. too. But, but through action is, but, is no, I mean, I, yeah. I agree. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, in one way or another, you are like, you could, okay, re, <laughs> redefine it or use a different word than worship, whatever. There's something that is your top priority. Something will fill true. that spot. There, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and something will never quench your thirst. That's the yeah. argument. And that's the point. And that's the, the argument. And here's the evidence. So you're not worshiping money or what like that, but there's something that you're going to be continually driving towards that will will always leave you thirsty. Yeah. And that is the problem. And the and the and when I heard that, I looked at the evidence of that and you see people who chase money or fame, or power or pleasure mm -hmm. yeah. or power and that's that's exactly what happens. And then you look at the data on people that are, you know, actively very spiritual and they have a practice and a faith and then you look at the data on happiness and anxiety with them you're like, "Whoa, they all do a lot better." Like, "Well, it's community." I don't think it's just community. I think you find community with the money chasers and the pleasure chasers and the power sure, chasers sure, also, sure. Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't turn out the same. They all turn out yeah, yeah. not so happy. Yeah, anyway, I, I want I got a shout out. We talked about range of motion at the beginning of the episode. We have a guide for squatting. Literally, 
The guide is how to squat like a pro. And in there, we talk about all the different components. It's free. It's free. It costs nothing. It's totally free. It's at mindpumpfree.com and it breaks down all the things you need to know and learn and do, not just squatting, but other things as well that will improve the depth of your squat, the stability and strength of your squat. So it's a free guide. It's awesome. Look, children's multivitamins are typically just candy. That's what they make them. They're like gummy candies. Well, anyway, there's a company called Haya Health that makes a multivitamin, no sugar, and it's got the right amount of nutrients for your kids. This is the only supplement company we work with for children. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash mind pump, uh, and you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Nicole from Washington. Hi, Nicole. How can we help you? What's happening? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. We're going good. This is crazy. Okay. I'm going (laughs) to... I'm going to try not to freak out. Okay. Um, I'm just going to get into my question. Otherwise, I'm just going to... My anxiety is going to start up. So, um, (laughs) So what advice would you give to an introverted extrovert who prefers lifting alone but wants to break out of their shell and start working out with others. Lifting with others would have benefits such as having spotters, accountability buddies, and other perspectives in health and fitness in general. I am reluctant to, uh, to socialize and lift with others due to potential laziness, excessive talking and making sets last longer than they should, or not being disciplined with workouts and nutrition, um, which can cause me to fall out of my routine because I can easily be persuaded. Uh, a few caveats. I live in a really, really small town um, in Washington state uh, with one local gym. There are bigger gyms in neighboring towns about 30 to 45 minutes away. But due to living in LA for five years, I despise commuting and wish to never have to go through that ever again. Um, I've tried going in the afternoons and the evenings, but most equipment is being used and it makes it almost impossible to be consistent with my core lifts. We only have three squat racks and one deadlift platform. And the last one is, I do prefer to lift before work, which is a 4 a.m. start. I feel best starting my day with a workout and equipment is almost always available. It's the most consistent I've ever been. Um, Do I need to move to a bigger city, get a therapist, suck it up and commute and stop whining like a little bitch? Um, (laughs) I feel like I already know the answer to my question, but I just need to hear it from you guys for it to be valid. Yeah, you're overthinking it. You know, you've been consistent working out. Are you working out at 4 a.m. at this gym? Yes. Oh, keep doing it. And what? Yeah. And so I I want to get. I want to go back to like the the introvert extrovert. Do that with you. Yeah. 4 a.m. It's introvert (laughs) extrovert. You are you wanting to work out with friends or are you trying to? Because I hate working out. Yeah, it's overrated. I hate working out with somebody. Honestly. So and I'm I'm very extroverted. Okay. I really don't have many friends, to be okay. honest, like oh. that, that like fitness in general. Um, I'm single. I So most of my friends and family are married with children. So I'm kind of like the outlier, okay. I guess. So I, I like the idea of of meeting people from the gym and having coffee and doing it. But I'm not a fan of working out with people. I've never been a fan of that just because we're all so individualized, right? Like even if you found an, a, another woman your age with similar goals, if I was training each of you, you guys would have different programs and different diets based off of your, your metabolism, your goals, your past. Like, so I've never been a fan of like lifting, with, especially if you've already established a good rhythm and routine by yourself. Like that to me as a, as a coach and a trainer is more valuable than the like, hey, let's go find somebody who also wants like, I would use the gym then to like meet people and say, and maybe go grab coffee, but not per se looking for a work lift out lifting partner because you're doing so well by yourself what do you nicole what are your uh like your some of your core values obviously exercise and fitness is one of them do you have any others that you'd say are like important like if you found people with similar core values you'd be like yeah i I would like for people to be into these types of things so i mean i love traveling um i like going to music festivals um I'm, i'm a teacher too so i guess anything to really kind of collaborate with teaching Those types of things. Those are my passions. Okay. Do you like to do any outdoor activities like uh, hiking or um, anything like that? I mean, I will go hiking, but again, I live in Eastern Washington and it's kind of like the desert out here. So Mm. I'll have to kind of drive somewhere to go see some trees. Um, I see. (laughs) But I would love that. I see. (laughs) I go for walks. Yeah. Because the reason I'm asking is, you know, um, first off, you work out early in the morning. And in my experience, I don't know what your gym is like, but in my experience, early morning workouts, 
you tend to see the same people every time you're in there, right? So you probably see each other, you probably give each other a nod, and then you do your workout, they do their workout. One thing you can do is when you, you go up to somebody that you've seen many times and you say, hey, after the workout, would you like to grab some coffee with me? Or, hey, you know, I'd like to do, you do anything outside of here. I'm looking for somebody to go on walks with or something like that. So that's one thing you could do. The other thing you do is look for groups um, that of people who are like-minded. So, you know, this could be uh, a spiritual group. This could be a hiking group. This could be a group that's interested in some other hobby. It just makes it easier to meet people who tend to be growth-minded and, and, and like-minded. Finding someone to work out with, you know, there's positives to it, but there's a lot of negatives as well. You listed a lot of them. Mm -hmm. In my experience, it's overrated to find or to try to find workout partners because um, because of what you said. You know, they're not as serious or not as consistent or you tend to do their workout sometimes and that's not really the best workout that's for you. But really, I, I think looking for groups outside of the yeah. gym. I think the hobby route is, is <laughs> totally your best bet and uh, to a lot of those points. But I mean, even just like early in the morning, that's kind of a rough uh, time to like really interact with people. I know I'm definitely not a morning person, so I can't really identify <laughs> with that. But um, I know that um, there's whatever it is that you're into uh, outside of, of working out as well. Like, I don't know if you're into sports, if you're into you know, any kind of other like music hobbies, obviously you go to, do you play any instruments or, or do anything like that? No, not really. I mean, I nerd out on stuff like Renaissance festivals, I guess, which. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Get some LARP in it. You seem like an awesome, <laughs> you seem like a cool person. I'd hang out with you. Yeah. I Look, I, I, you know, I, I would look, <laughs> look into groups. because I, I, I like hobbies and group stuff outside. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I don't work out or hang out with these dummies in the gym, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, like, I don't fucking. I'm I don't friends wanna, with these guys, but yeah. no, I would never. Yeah, work out I ain't with working out with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, makes that's, them feel insecure. That's my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I can't, I, Sal's hogs the mirror okay. the whole time. There's no, there's no, there's no way Justin and I are going to get a lift in with him. No, no, I mean, I just think that uh, I don't know. Some people do like the gym for social reasons, but you don't sound like that. You actually sound more like us. Like you yeah. like to you're lift. You're in and out. Yeah, you like to lift. You're focused. You're into your core. Like I mean, that's that to me. That's like your. That's your sanctuary. That's your church time. That's you. That's you. Your body, God, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. like that to me. That's don't don't disrupt that with trying to make friends. Go make friends I mean, at the he, festivals, yeah. concerts. A forum, you know, here, here's unless a, you're working on something towards like a, a, like an outdoor, like an OCR event or something like that, or, or a powerlifting meet. Yeah, a powerlifting meet, like something like that has an objective where it's I, like I got to work towards this. I did see that you have Maps Powerlift. Would you be? I think that would be a really cool. Yeah. That's uh, a that's a really tight community. Damn, is that you, you? You got some good lifts. Yeah, if you like powerlift, have you considered signing up for a powerlifting meet? Yeah, it's it's kind of I'm I'm on that borderline of like getting in, into that and then figuring out where the meets are. It's just traveling. Cause again, I'm so in such an isolated area in Washington where I have to drive either like Spokane or Seattle to find a meet, which I can do. It's just you're, yeah, finding you're, the meets and getting you, you should it. find a, just a bench press. It, it, you, you said it says here, your PR is 175. Yeah, I, well, actually I hit 185. Like not too long ago, dude. At your body yeah, weight, yeah, that, that, that you probably beat everybody. You should do a mat. You should do a power lifting meet. I think you're uh, one. Yeah. You're already would do really well. Even if it's like in Spokane, you yeah. you're, you're only gonna go there for the one day. I mean, you train outside of that. You'll you'll be introduced to that community. You'll probably find somebody else who likes to power lift and like some of the other things that you're into. I think that's a cool community to be a part of too. For sure. Yeah. You know, the, the, the challenge is when you become an adult is you, you have to go out of your way. Like, yeah. It's like, you're not, you don't go to school, you know, you're not, it's like, it's like you just, your friends just pop up. It becomes more challenging uh, when you're an adult, you have to go out of your way to do those things. And in my, if I, I've thought about this, right? Like if I, if, you know, if I were on my own and, and had to try and, and make friends, I would look for groups uh, where I'd be interested in the activities. Uh, for example, if I'd want to, you know, read about something, I would find a group that was interested in that particular topic and would meet maybe once a week. Um, or I would go to a local church and I'd try to become more involved. Another one is volunteer work. You know, if you have a passion and for something, it sounds like you like working with kids. You know, if you have a, you could volunteer somewhere and then you would meet other people who are volunteering for the same thing. 
and you probably make some great friends there. It takes work is is the is the thing. It, it doesn't happen by accident. You have to get outside of your your comfort zone and put yourself in places. Especially when you live in a small town. Especially yeah. when you live in a small town yeah, yeah. and put yourself in places regularly. And then these things start to kind of start to happen. But otherwise it's like, like even now I, I talked with my wife about this. Like we're trying to make more friends that are couples with little kids. And it's like, you know, we're like, Oh, wouldn't it be great if we just had a neighbor who was, you know, that's not going to happen. You have to like go out and meet people and then it starts to kind of happen, and and now it's starting to happen for us with our with our church group. But if we didn't do that, it's like it doesn't just fall in your lap. So I would look for, like I said, groups or activities that you think either want to learn about things that you might be passionate about. Yeah. Find them, meet with those people, and then you'd be surprised. Some kind of medieval powerlifting. Group. And then uh, huzzah. <laughs> Work on that resting bitch face thing, Nicole, because that probably doesn't help. <laughs> hey, okay. Make, she, okay. Real quick, Smile. she wrote that in her question. <laughs> Everyone's going to think you're saying I know, that. I was gonna say, that's so mean, Adam. Yeah. No, no, no. She said that or else yeah. I wouldn't say that. It's in her question, so I saw it. So yeah, smile. Practice smiling. That's a good practice. Listen, so that, I, don't trust I, any, I don't trust anybody that lifts weights while smiling. If you don't have a mean face while you're working out, like, what are you doing? Yay. Yeah, 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 that doesn't work. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I I really like the okay. power. I do like you do it. I mean, you you would do well. I would love to see you. I Definitely mean, your bench press. No, that's crazy. I mean, all those numbers, bro. Yeah. Squatting, deadlifting. Are like, you uh, yeah. are you in our forum by any chance? I'm not. No. Oh, there you well, go. And by the way, there's people. There's probably there's people, people in, there in there that Seattle area yeah. that are in there. So yeah, that's a great community potentially to meet somebody in there too. So in fact, we have lots of people actually okay. that have met and gotten married from our forum. You know that we have. Yeah. We've gotten people late. They go camping. Yeah. They do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have Doug. All right, well, you guys basically answered. Oh, sorry, you you basically answered my question. I guess that whole I was starting to feel like, am I? Is it wrong that I don't want to live with people, or is that normal? No, so no. just I guess hearing it from you guys, it's yeah. it's normal. So I, cool. It, it's better. <laughs> you're you're on the right track. Yeah, you're yeah, better. Yeah. Don't mess that up. That's a good thing. And you and you're doing good. So don't do that. So I, Doug's gonna send you over access okay. to get in the private forum. Get in there, say hi, introduce yourself, and awesome. tag us so we can talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All Thank right, you Nicole. guys again. Thank you for everything you guys do. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All thanks right. for listening. Thank you. You know, enough people don't talk about this, but it is, we've talked about this on the show. There's a loneliness epidemic that's happening with kids, with adults, with older adults. Um, the older, older adults, boomers don't seem to be suffering from this, but I think that's because they grew up in a generation where they made friends They're just and, sitting their ways. Like, well, and it's, it's, it's actually harder. It's always been hard, right? To go out and try and make friends, especially once you're an adult, Oh yeah. but it's gotten harder and harder because the typical gatherings and meetings aren't happening as much. People are at home more. They're on the internet more. They're communicating with the internet more. Well, you're a really good person to, to hear elaborate on this because you're like literally doing this, aren't you? This is like something that you guys like li recently have like actively. Yeah. Yeah. Your doors. Sunday, yeah. Jessica, huh? every Sunday she, she came up with this idea. And let me, let me tell you, this is not like, oh, we're going to enjoy this. Like, if we're not huge entertainers. Uh, we tend to get anxious with lots of people, got to clean, whatever. We got little kids, but it's like, that's exactly what we want to do it. So we opened our doors Sundays for all family and friends to show up. It's a potluck. And the point was to build that community. You can't build a community without regular, you know, interaction. And we want our kids to be around other kids. And so we're like, let's just make it happen. And I imagine yeah, and we've been doing it and I, it's been great. And I imagine there's even a bit of a uncomfortable transition, right? Totally. Of like it's, this is out of our comfort zone. 100%. It's not normally what we do like hundred percent, but you, you know, find yourself, uh, you guys in the moment having to pull each other away, but relax, it's going to be fine. We'll just let, we the, just try to make it talk as, about it ahead of time. Yeah. Well, we try to make it as, uh, informal as possible. So it's like, we clean, everybody cleans up, you know, everybody doesn't, you know, we just have rather than like, we're serving dinner here and we're trying to right, make it right, as right, formal right. as possible. Um, and that's good, but it's just, it's really about being with other people. And the other part is just, you know, regularly going to church, meeting people there, you know, you start to meet families that are on a similar path and, uh, that's how you make the kind of friends that you want. It doesn't happen unless you get to go outside your house, Yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Our next caller is Grace from Kansas. Hi, Grace. How can we help you? Hi. Um, yeah. So calling from Kansas city world champs, chiefs kingdom. Mm. Um, 
Wow. Thank you for the opportunity. You just, that, went right, that went right over Sal's head. No, I didn't. They beat the San Francisco 49ers. I'm, I'm still salty about <laughs> no the Super Bowl. I, no idea. They Let's the, move past that. They What's made, your question? They made the most baskets. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? How can exactly. We help you? Right. you got it, Sal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was planning to read my question, but struggling to get my email to load here. So I'll just try to remember exactly what I had asked. So I initially um, ran Map Starter, and I didn't realize at the time, but towards the end of Map Starter, I felt like I had a lot of symptoms of overtraining. And then switched to Maps 15, a lot of that resolved until I got to phase three, um, where all of the circuits are. And so I was curious on the best way to kind of move phase three around to better fit what works well for me. And then I was also just kind of curious on the background behind the circuits. Obviously there's something there that you have done to make those circuits effective, but just kind of curious on why, because I know it's a little different than what you normally recommend. Couple, couple more questions for you. Give us a little insight. I'm assuming you probably work uh, quite a few hours. Do you work a lot? Yes. Which, okay. Tell me, tell me a little bit about your, yeah, your, let's talk about your lifestyle. Yeah. Let's talk about your lifestyle and, and first address uh, why that is for you, right? And then, and then we'll better have a better answer after that. Yep. So I currently work, my job's a little more on the stressful side, I think, compared to other jobs. Um, I work in big four accounting um, for KPMG. And then I also have a son who is, my, he's two, he's still figuring out how to sleep by himself. So oh, wow. okay. I think those areas are not helping me. Yes. Yeah. No, that's great, Grace, because, um, Map starter and maps 15 are pretty low volume. And if they're causing you to overtrain, which is possible, then that means that you there's lifestyle factors that a lot are, on your plate. There's a lot of stress on your body and it's making those workouts, which are both designed uh, to be again, low volume and appropriate for, for most people, especially starter. If you're finding yourself overtraining, there's two places that I would look first. You, you mentioned one of them, which is sleep. That's a tough one. If you have chronically poor sleep, I mean, you could do one exercise a day and find yourself overtraining. I remember when we had my my three year old, my wife went through a period of such poor sleep over a four month period that almost any exercise at all, even the most mild exercise, was too much for her because she was barely surviving with just that just that sleep. So the first thing I'd say is let's really see if we can figure out um, the sleep uh, situation. The second thing is I would look for any potential uh, nutrient deficiencies, okay? So uh, I would test for common nutrient deficiencies, iron, uh, that tends to make people feel fatigued if it's low, it's more common in women. Um, I would look at vitamin D as another one, zinc would be another one. Those are very easy tests to do. And then as far as the workout is concerned, always modify the workout if it feels like it's too much. So if Phase three of MAPS 15 is making you feel like this is too much. Don't do phase three. I would go back to phase one and I would alternate between phase one and phase two. The reason why we put phase three in there is it is a stamina, more of a stamina building mm -hmm. phase. However, because of the higher reps and because it's of the- still low volume though. Yes. It's, well, it's, it's higher volume, right? Than, than phase one and two. So- in the in the meantime, I would skip phase three yep. and I would go phase one and two or go back to starter and cut some of the sets out of starter until it feels appropriate. And or just, uh, you know, instead of the short rest periods or, or no rest periods in the supersets, actually giving yourself rest yeah, periods extend it. and extend the workout if you have the time to do that. I do want to add, uh, do because I'm I'm reading your email too. And one of the things that we didn't talk about yet is the nutritional side and you, you allude to uh, maybe potentially battling with like a uh, eating disorder before or having something like in that in that world like where if you're also in addition to all the things you got going on in your life and following a program and then you're eating in a a large caloric deficit this could also make you feel very overtrained too and so tell me a little bit about kind of your relationship with food and how you eat currently right now yeah, so I do, Sally, I know you mentioned this. I do take vitamin D and zinc. Um, I did two blood tests through Transcend and they recommended it. So started okay. taking those. Oh, good. Um, I don't track calories, trying not to get back in a bad place, but I do track protein. So I think 
I try to hit around 150 grams. I'm oh, usually good. between like 140 and 160. Oh, good. But good. I'm not 100 percent sure. That's good though. That's good. It's got it's the sleep then. Give okay. us some give us some details on sleep. Okay. Yeah. So what is what does a typical night of sleep look like for you with your two year old? Um, the past week it's been better. Um, She's like, I, I get some on Monday, through. some on Friday. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> no, that's about right. Um, <laughs> I used to be up basically every hour, wow. um, every other night. So my husband and I trade off. Whoa. Currently, I'm up for maybe three times a night for about one to two hours. Ooh. So oh, yeah. it's gotten Ooh. better. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, that's that. There's, there's, listen. There is. That's what it is. Yeah, th th that is that is devastating. <laughs> that's what it is, yeah. That is very devastating. And then you stack that on a very have you, high stress job. Have too. you? Is there is there a reason for this, um, or is, is it like normal sleep challenges with your child? Um, I guess normal sleep challenges. We we he used to sleep in our bed, so we were co-sleeping. Uh, we tried to move in his bed in January so that I could get up early to work out, and we're just. Still trying to get him to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Have you hired a sleep trainer for your kid? Have you tried that? No, not. Oh. No. Oh, game changer. Game changer. Oh, really? Okay. It, it saved our life. So we hired uh, a sleep uh, expert that works specifically with children. Same thing with my cousin. My cousin, his son was a nightmare with sleep as well. His wife was losing her mind. We, they also hired a sleep coach. And it made a significant improvement and fixed the problem. Now, my son is three and a half now. And, uh, you know, I'd say he's probably still not as good of a sleeper as the average three-year-old. But it is light years better. What you just mentioned is exactly what he would do. It's like you'd have to, like two, three times a night, you'd have to wake up, soothe him, try and get him to chill, whatever. Uh, the sleep coach was a game changer. And you'll go, you're going to go through like a week or two period where it's going to be kind of hard and then it just gets significantly better. So I would go online. There's a lot of them. I would go online, look them up. In fact, I'll have Doug email you the company we went through. I don't know if I can say it on air because I don't know if they're still around, but I'll have Doug email you. You can look at them and, or look at others and um, a game changer because if you don't fix the sleep issue, it's going to be really hard. I mean, it's going to be really, really hard with workouts because your body's already so taxed that any additional stress right. is just putting you it's over. It's really delicate yeah. at that point. And, and for now, what you're doing with like, kind of like listening to your body, you, it's good that you recognize that you're probably kind of overtraining with the supersets and Sal's advice, like, you know, take the day off, just go for a walk, totally. do, uh, like that's okay right now. Like right now, prioritizing sleep and, and solving that first, all the, the, the extra lifting weights when you're, when your body is that stressed, that's just doing you sleep, damage. It's not yeah. doing you any favors. So, and I, and I also wouldn't want you just to completely throw it out and be like, oh, F it because I'm not getting good sleep, but you know, choose to walk instead right. or, you know, choose More therapeutic to, movement. Yeah. Or choose to give longer rest periods and, or do just a couple movements and then, and then stop the workout. And because you're doing a good job, it sounds like on the nutritional side, as far as hitting your protein intake and you know, you're not, and I don't need you counting calories. I don't want to send you down that route. That's fine. We really need to solve the sleeping thing. And less is more right now with the training. Um, and even though we're doing different things, but I don't know if you've heard me talking so far about my journey with trisepatide. One of the things that I'm talking to the guys off air about is like, man, I have to completely change. Like we don't have a program for what I'm going through right now. Like I like MAPS starter and MAPS 15 sometimes feels overwhelming. And it's because I'm so deprived of nutrients. And even though it's a different struggle that you're going through, but it's still too much stress on the body. It's still too much stress for the body. So yeah. I know I know that my <laughs> trainer brain could push me through the workout, but I also know that's not going to do me any favors. I'm not going to build any more muscle. I'm not going to lose any more body fat by doing that. My body is just going to stress my body more. And it's just going to revolt. And so you're you're in a similar predicament with stress, with work and the and the not sleeping. And so, you know, listen to your body when you feel like you're in that state and just go for a nice walk or do something more meditative on those days. The days you actually might feel good, do the gym and get the lift in and stuff like that. But give yourself that grace. No pun intended, Grace. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty similar to what I've been doing. So I increase the rest periods a little bit and then on bad sleep nights, I'm trying to do like mobility. Um, cause I do want to get some kind of workout in outside of walking. So yeah. I've been trying to do mobility and I was hoping increasing the rest periods wouldn't be too negatively impactful on the program. To totally not. Totally mm -hmm. not. I love that. No. Are you, uh, okay. Grace, are you already in our form? No. 
Uh, I uh, try not to get on Facebook, but uh, <laughs> I do have one. Okay, well, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Doug send you access so you can do there, just because the community will be great in there. We're in there, and so uh, you know, hopefully, we can help <coughs> as you get through this whole sleep this sleep time, and then help you come out of that and like give advise along the way. So just stay in touch with us. So send, send us an update how things are going okay. and, and hopefully improving, and then uh, and then if you have any questions along the way, we can help guide you through that process. Okay. And is there anything I tried, like some adaptogens and Ned, are those the best options to try to mitigate yeah. the sleep issues as much as possible? Yeah. Ashwagandha. Okay. I like ashwagandha, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's like you have an empty pool. You need to fill it with water and ashwagandha is like, you Throwing know, cups of like water. A, it's like, yeah, you, like you threw like a, like a shot glass of water in there, <laughs> Spitting but it. it'll, it'll do a little bit, but it, I mean, really it's going to be, I, I'm telling you right now, the best invest, one of the best investments I ever made was a sleep coach. When we hang up here, I'll have Doug email you. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try and get their number and send it over to you. And, but you can look at other places my cousin went with someone else and it was still effective. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks for the opportunity today. And, um, I'll say I would definitely be, I used to train to failure on every set. So I would be making this problem even worse right now. Oh, if I had to watch yeah, yes. Indeed. Okay. I'm glad you found us. Information yes. you awesome. Grace. <laughs> yep. Thank you. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. But I, that, that's brutal. I, I, I mean, I, I, I knew, feel... I knew, I knew right away yeah. when she of course. said overtraining on starter. Yeah. Starter at 15. And then was... even 15. I'm like, wait a minute. But I, you I know what? Though, I, tell, I mean, I, <clears throat> I've shared a little bit. I just shared a little bit right now with you guys, but this is what I've been talking to you guys off air about. It's like, I want, I'm really motivated right now to create something that addresses like just the way I feel with being so low calorie. It's affecting sleep. It's affecting all yeah. these things. And so it's like, I can't train like I normally would train. Otherwise it's worthless. Maybe like yeah. a program specifically for overstressed yeah, overstress or under calorie, under nutrients, something yeah. along those like lines. Like a recovery program. Yeah, like and that. so I just, it's not, and, and even MAPS 15 some days just feels like, oh, of course. I, yeah, it's just too much today. I, I t Man, I feel her, dude. I tell you what, I, you know, when you're, Sleep thing. oh my God, I remember my, my wife literally started experiencing psychosis <clears throat> through that period because it's just, you know, three, four yeah. hours a night, every night for like four or five months it's in a row. It'll drive you mad. <clears throat> so and then um, think how it's probably affecting her business partners too. They're probably having yeah. a hard time with it because yeah, she's yeah. not. She's not <laughs> well, that's a good thing it wasn't me. <laughs> Still show up, do the show. <clears throat> it's a yeah. tough one. Hiring the sleep coach was downstream a game effects. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> assholes. <laughs> Our next caller is Allie from Indiana. Allie, what's going on? What's happening? Hey guys, so excited to be here. How you doing? Uh, so first of all. I'm, I'm great. Um, first of all, well, I want to start by saying I lost my voice at a concert last weekend. So uh, someone told me I sound like I sm uh, smoke 20 packs a day. So I promise <laughs> if anything, if you don't understand anything, ask me to repeat myself. <laughs> um, and well, also, sorry. like everyone says, I, <laughs> I'm uh, so grateful for you guys. Um, back in high school, uh, I struggled a lot with um, uh, over exercising and under eating. Um, and so all glory to God for putting you guys in my path, um, giving me real information to help, um, heal my body in a lot of ways to get me to where I am. Um, awesome. so, uh, yeah, my question is pretty simple. Um, I've been uh, working on a reverse diet. Um, I'm a high level, uh, D one athlete. Um, and my goal is to, uh, improve, keep, uh, my muscle or increase my muscle, um, and, uh, maintain my performance um, while just getting to a healthier uh, metabolism place. Um, and in doing that, I'm trying to um, eat around 140 grams of protein a day. Um, but I find that when I do that, um, I often have indigestion. Um, and I'm not quite sure why this is happening. I played around with this. Um, um, so uh, I'm happy to give you guys any more uh, information if you'd like. Have you, have you played around with the types of protein intake? For example, like, uh, you know, do you eat, a, do you notice a difference when you eat chicken versus yeah. red meat or fish versus chicken or red meat, like eggs, stuff like that? Are you, are you noticing a difference in the types of protein or is it just protein in general? You notice, have you done any kind of elimination diet or anything to parse it out? Yes, I've worked on that some, um, I would say most of my protein or almost all that comes from chicken, beef and eggs. Um, and I would say it doesn't seem to matter what I eat. Like I could cut out eggs, I could cut out beef. Um, and nonetheless, I still get the same results at the end of the day. Okay. So 
I've worked with clients like this, and there's a couple. There could be a couple things here. One, do you notice that your digestive issues disappear when you drop your protein intake to a certain point? In other words, is it is it like, oh, I feel great, but once I go past this point, then I start noticing issues? Is it like that? I would say so. Yeah. Hmm. What? How many grams of protein uh, do you feel that you can digest okay or well? Um, I would say around. If I'm staying under 120 grams protein, I seem to be um, like not having any of those issues. Okay. Well, then that's what I would do. What's your, what's your, uh, what, what, why are you aiming for 135? Is that one gram of protein per pound of body weight? Or goal. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. You're fine. So you don't have to hit one to one. In fact, the data shows it's somewhere between 0. 0.6 Six. to 0. 0.8. You're well within adequate protein if you're consistently hitting. Yeah. 105 to 120 grams of protein a day. If she hits 100 consistently, you're going to be okay. You're okay. I would make up the calories with things that seem to be okay with digestion. So other foods that you notice you digest well. Now, if your digestive issues are there regardless, then I would do some gut testing to see if there's any, you know, dysbiosis like SIBO yeah. or potential parasite or anything like that, right? But if you notice when you go down to like 110, 120, your digestion seems to be okay. Then, then, then it's the high protein, and that happens sometimes with people. Because, you know, because there's a fiber to protein ratio I found for some people that doesn't seem to work well. The other thing you could try, and this might not solve it, but for some people this helps, is to supplement with uh, digestive enzymes. We work with a company uh, called uh, Bioptimizers. They have a, a an enzyme called Masszymes, and it's the best one that I've used. And, uh, when I go really, really high protein now, my, mine, mine goes much higher than yours, but I notice kind of similar stuff that when I use the mass times with my meals, I seem to have, uh, no issues at all. And it may just be that you're not producing the adequate amount of enzymes like th to break down the protein into amino acids. Are you eating this, your protein in, in three meals, four meals, five meals? Have you tried smaller amounts or larger amounts to see if it makes a difference? Uh, I usually get three meals between, I usually uh, only have time for uh, breakfast before classes and then uh, lunch right before I go to practice and then dinner right after everything ends. So, so that's a hundred not much time in between. Okay. So here's something else you could try. So, so the, there's three things I recommend. One, Smaller just stick to 110, size. 120 grams of protein. You know, you're, you're, you'll be fine there. Two, try supplementing with digestive enzymes with your meals. Three, Go lower protein, but add a fourth a fourth smaller meal with the extra protein. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then in, in between somewhere, you'll have the extra protein or maybe, you know, an hour or two before bed. Those four, out of those four things I recommend, or three things I recommended, one of those will probably solve the issue. I mean, I would add a fourth too, if you haven't done it already, uh, is to track your fiber just to see. Um, <clears throat> when I talk about when I, when I would, uh, assess diets, one of the most common offenders for clients, especially my clients that just had yeah. some digestive issues were just, were significantly under eating protein on a regular basis. And sometimes me just literally adding, you know, a cup of berries and spinach every day was all of a sudden this like game changer for them. So yeah. I don't know if you have tracked fiber before. Um, but doing that and seeing, I, the, I do, I do get a lot of fiber in my oh, diet. Okay. You do. Okay. So that's not the issue. Okay. Well, no, is this yeah. too, is this after like, say your meal before yeah. practice or like, is it like, do you notice it more, I guess, uh, oh, then or at, di at night, dinner or morning, is there a difference? Uh, definitely most at night, um, after I've had dinner, um, and I'll have like practice and workouts and then eat dinner and then it starts. Okay. I was wondering so if there's information. are you eating right after the practice or is it like an hour after? Uh, I'll eat, I'll eat dinner. Um, yeah. Right after workouts usually. Oh, that so could, sometimes that, yeah, there's an issue with that too, because of the inflammation that exactly. the workouts are causing. So you might, you can maybe wait uh, an hour afterwards. I mean, we're throwing a lot of things at you yeah, no. to be honest with you. If you did, if you just went down to what feels okay, like 110, 150 you're grams of protein, okay. you'll, you'll, you you're not going to lose anything from that. You just make up the calories with carbs or fats. You're getting adequate protein. Yeah. 
it totally wouldn't be an issue. If you if you lowered the protein a bit and it, it had added like instead of uh, having three big bigger meals, having four smaller meals, I think that would make a massive difference. Yeah, so so. De- decreasing the volume of the food okay. that you're intaking while also decreasing the total grams of protein yeah. should should make a big difference by itself. And I'll tell you, Ali, I'd say probably 15 to 20% of my clients would notice what you're saying. And we would root out gut issues and all that stuff. And it was just, they just did better with not one gram of protein per pound of body weight. They, they would notice things like constipation and indigestion. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it, that's a significant minority. You know, it's like, you know, one to two out of every 10 people I train, this is exactly what we do. And I'd say, okay, well, cool, we'll bring it down. They noticed no difference in gains. In fact, they had better results because of the reduced inflammation from, you know, digestive issues. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Good luck. What sport? Okay. What, yeah, what, what, what sport do you play? Enough. What sport do you play, by the way? I'm a golfer. I'm a golfer. Oh, oh golfer. wow! That's a great sport right. to play. Awesome. Yeah, it's <laughs> got some yeah. longevity there. Good for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank All right, you. Allie. All right. So we have to address what I know always happens when we have a call like this, and we tell somebody to eat lower protein. Is that by the way, it's still high protein. I know. I just we 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 press the one to one thing so much for optimal for building muscle and just and, mo- majority of people. And 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 so it because we're advising her the other direction, it, it's because we're addressing the digestive issues. Yep. And there are there are a small percentage of people that do have issues with intaking that much protein. Many times the type of protein, the size of the meals. Uh, five, I mean, all the things that we I said mean, yeah. could actually solve it. But if it still doesn't, then it's okay that she eats a lower amount of protein. She can still build muscle. She can still, it's just, it's not the, the best amount for building the most amount of muscle, but this supersedes that because improving your digestion, if that gets better, even in a lower protein state, she could potentially build more muscle. Everything operates better. Yeah. Well, she will. And it's not even lower. Listen, here's the deal. It, the, the data is clear on this. It, it, 115 grams of protein is within the range of what is considered the upper limit of what you're going to get benefit from. So she's not really compromising anything. One of the main reasons why we say one to one, there's two. One is it's easy to remember. So we could, yeah. it's easy to sell. You know, people aren't going to consistently hit it. Right. And two people tend to fall short of it. And then they still fall within that range. That's why, why we've trained so many people. We know what to say to get the result that we want versus here's what the data says and point that and which ends up resulting in people actually eating less because people tend to miss that so our next caller is rachel from arizona hi rachel how can we help you hey guys how are you good Good. how are you doing good um first of all thanks for taking my call i never thought i'd actually ask a question um (laughs) i've been listening since 2016 yeah so i oh yeah back when we sucked okay (laughs) I I have loved watching the progression of like the show and like everything about it since 2016. It's it's have we wild. got better or worse. Who yeah, who do you hate more, me or Sal? Oh, that's a tough that's <laughs> wow. <I'll laughs> that later. Let me let me sit we'll on circle it. back. Oh, you simultaneously <laughs> offended <laughs> both of us. <laughs> the default is Doug, you know. That's <laughs> Anyway. Uh, okay. So I'll try to keep it short, but I feel like context, uh, is everything in this question. Uh, my question at face value is how would you implement, um, a GLP one with a time sensitive weight loss? And I'm not talking about like, Oh, I want to go on vacation. Um, this is like, I want to get pregnant later this year, like in the late summer, early fall, but I am so uncomfortable where I am right now. And to go into that, um, I had my baby and my first baby in September of 21, four months later in January of 22, I had some extreme trauma, like the trauma where you wonder if you want to go on every day. Um, I was breastfeeding at the time I had a four month old infant. And so that's a lot. Um, and so between that January of 22 and October of 22, when I weaned her, um, I gained about five ish pounds. As soon as I stopped nursing her, I gained between October of 22 and January of 23, I gained like 25 pounds. Um, I'm five, two. I'm currently 187 as of this morning and it just doesn't want to move. It slowly started moving, um, but not 
like it should. Um, in December, I had gotten so desperate, I started semaglutide, like a really low dose, and it made me miserable. Uh, it honestly felt like first trimester, like without the baby. Yeah. Uh, nauseous. I had a headache the day after I did the injection. I was fatigued. My sleep was shit. I didn't want to train, which is so abnormal for me. Um, I got a protein. I had a worse protein aversion with semaglutide than I did when I was pregnant. Yeah. Um, and so then I was like, well, this isn't worth it. This is defeating the purpose. Like I'm not able to hit my protein goals. I don't want to like waste away as dramatic as that sounds, this, I, I felt conflicted. So my husband was actually like, why don't you write mind pump? And I was like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> um, so, uh, in February, I, uh, started with a coach, um, and found out my maintenance right now is about 1850. We were there for about six weeks, cut to like 1650 for four weeks and like still nothing was really going. So she's like, 15 is like the lowest I want to cut you, but I want to see what happens. So I've been at 15 for about a week and a half and I've dropped like a, a average, like a pound over the last few weeks. Um, I'm definitely gaining more mass. So I know there's an exchange there. I, I definitely know that like my body fat's going down. I'm actually getting a DEXA scan today for the first time. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm not dropping fast enough to be comfortable to get pregnant later this summer, Rachel, so. you're, you're you're doing okay. Um, so f number one, let's 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 address the GLP one. There's a small percentage of people that experience what you experience. So I have a friend, same thing. He went on a very yeah. low dose, and he's like, "Bro, I was I felt like throwing up. I felt terrible. Yeah. They put me in mm -hmm. a lower dose. I still felt terrible." Do you know that the yeah. Do you know that the the trisepatide one that I'm on right yeah. now that that's supposed to be the reason why it's better is that it's it reduces that? Yeah, yeah. The people. I mean, you could. That's try what I've heard because it's the second gen. But I, I, but just so you know, Rachel, I wouldn't want you on yeah. this. I'm on. I, I, I don't know if you've been listening. I've been updating. Right, I'm on week five right now. Yeah. So I'm on. Week I was wondering. Yeah. I, I know you said you were sick, but I'm like, mm, I want. Is it because he's sick, or is it because it's not agreeing? Yeah, yeah. No, it there. It it's definitely. Uh, I mean, I I'm like food is just. I don't like food. I don't like yeah. protein. I don't like. And I'm, yeah. I'm so like. Yeah, it's it's really tough. And where you're at in your journey right now, and you getting ready to even go into getting, uh, you know, pregnancy and stuff like that, uh, I'm not a fan of of you doing that at all. Be especially since, yeah. like, I mean, I would rather you. I know you don't want to be here, but I would rather you be higher body fat and well fed and getting pregnant than you undernourished. I mean, that, that's where you have complications right. with your best bet to mitigate the weight gain from pregnancy and postpartum is not <laughs> to go into it uh at a lighter body weight more your muscle. best bet yes your mm -hmm. best bet is to go into it with more muscle and strength that will yeah. that will give you far better recovery far better fat loss far better everything Way better rebound yeah. postpartum yeah. than if you go into it skinny so what oh, I would for sure, and and that's why I stopped it because I'm like, I, this is not the right way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so not if what, what I want. if what you're noticing is the transfer, and you just started with your coach, and you're no, are you are you getting stronger in your workouts? Yeah, yeah. for okay. sure. You're on okay. the right oh, track. Good. You're you're doing the right thing. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You're you're yeah. better off. I, mean, I know. Yeah. I've trained lots of women uh, before, during, and after pregnancy, and if I could pick. I would always pick a woman at higher body fat percentage with good muscle and strength going into it than a woman yeah. at lower body fat percentage with less muscle and strength because I've seen the recovery right. at the end of it and it's yeah. significantly better. So you're you're on yeah. the right track and I wouldn't even try to lose a ton of weight right now. I would go back up to 1650. I would, I would too. I would only let you do these low low calorie weeks for, you know, 2 weeks at a time then back up. Yeah, and I would go, let's just see how strong I can get. Let's see how fit I can get moving into it. Now, okay. what'll probably happen is you'll probably get leaner, especially within a few months as the metabolism boosts up, but really go into okay. it strong, go into it strong, hitting PRs, yeah. feeling like physically like good. And then the postpartum yeah. is going to be far better doing that. You'll get leaner yeah. faster afterwards doing that than you will going in. And, and you're, and, and here's the thing, you'll gain less weight during your pregnancy. I know it seems, yeah. con it seems counter where no, okay. it, it totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I didn't gain that. I gained like 28 pounds with my first pregnancy. I lost it within a couple months. It was after, after yeah. that trauma that it just like took off. And my metabolism was like, nope. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
One so, of the mo one okay. of the one of the most protecting tissues on the body to handle traumatic events is also muscles. So when they do data, yeah, when they do studies on uh, people who are bedridden, for example, which is severe trauma, right? You can't, you, you know, like you're just in bed, you can't get up. Uh, the survival the survival rate or the chronic illness rate among people with higher muscle mass is significantly better. Yeah. So really, what I would do is out going into pregnancy. My goal with you, if you were my client, would be Let's get you strong. Let's build muscle. Let's get you strong. I'm not going to be putting you on a crazy bulk, but I'm not going to be putting you on a crazy deficit either. And let's yep. see if we can get you strong, right. get the metabolism boosted. You so, you sound like you have a pretty good trainer. Uh, the fact that- That they won't go below yeah, 15. Yeah, that she didn't, she didn't want to go l lower than 1,500 and she had you kind of at the maintenance yeah. place. Like It sounds like you got a pretty good coach. I don't know yeah. whether you found her or not, but- Yeah, she's um, great. Okay, so I- Yeah, I mean, yeah. And just so you know, like I literally- Pair everybody to you guys. I'm like, but do they like? Are they saying the same things? If not, I'm not. <laughs> awesome. <worried. laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully Dude. she listens. Right. So do you, yeah. Do you have any of our programs? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Do you have any of our programs, Rachel? I have. I have a lot of them. Uh, I. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I can't think of. What I don't have. Um, I have anabolic. I have aesthetic prime prime pro 15. You have starter. I th I mean, is there one? That I I know I have strong. Starter is a good one for That's you after for the, the baby. Yes. Yeah. Starter is yeah. good for postpartum. If you don't have that, Starter? we'll send that. Yeah, yeah. Do stardom postpartum. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll yeah. When that. you get clear, symmetry be a good one. To have. And then okay. right right now, do you have symmetry? No. Oh, that would be so great. Follows. Okay, yeah. we'll give you yeah. both. One for each kid. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Starter <we> go. postpartum. <laughs> And uh, symmetry, <laughs> symmetry now. Follow symmetry now. That'll be a great program to follow. Uh, going into, yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank yeah. you. You got it. You got and it. Then stay, stay in touch with us. Circle back after the because it doesn't mean that we can't eventually utilize. Uh, you know the the GLP one. There's there's there it can be. I just where you're yeah. currently at right now. It's just it not advisable. Really I didn't make any sense. Yeah. 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 Not right now. Not right now. In the yeah, future, we can talk about. Yeah, I figured as much. That's why I was so conflicted that like my gut was like, stop, don't do this. Don't go down this path. Like this is not, this goes against your intuition, but perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but thank you guys. Um, and if you're ever in Arizona uh, and want to go shooting, my husband's super into building rifles and suppressors. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. You, Doug just yeah, perked like up. It. Doug just perked yeah, up. So. Doug Wick over here. What are talking about? Yeah, though. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're so if you're ever it. out here, uh, we know some good spots in the desert. So oh, fun. awesome. Oh, well, that we, sounds awesome. Yeah. We right, just, we'll we just saved it. your email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All Got right. it. I think you guys would have a good time. All right, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Rachel. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Bye, it. guys. Okay. Here's why I appreciate that she called because the all the hype around GLP ones is so positive. There are those people. Yeah. And she, that's another one. And I know someone else personally. Where it just makes them nauseous. Yeah, no, they just I, feel like garbage. That is, by the way, though, trisepatitis. They say that that's supposed to mitigate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't, and I haven't had any nausea like from from it. So that's yeah. the one. But thing. a lot of people don't even get nausea from semaglutide either. Yeah, it's a small percentage. I also think that some of the nausea too is just like low calorie. And these people are trying to work out still too. No, it literally is the GLP. It is literally the yeah. the, the the receptor. That oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh yeah. That some people are just sensitive. Like I have a buddy who. But nonetheless, even if she was okay with the like, didn't, yeah, no, was, I still wouldn't. Yeah. Want no, it her. would in this scenario. It not trying to get pregnant. Sense. No, I'm gonna say this again. Yeah. You're you're better off going into pregnancy with higher body fat yes. and, and high muscle than you are with low body fat and low muscle. You know that was we had, Katrina yeah. had to gain body fat. Uh -huh. And she's pregnant. not. Yeah, she's not. I, she's not even someone I'd consider really lean. Like, no. And the doctor was like, you know what? You need to put on more body fat. You just got. What were you, you feeding her? She's like more burgers, cheeseburgers. And stuff. <laughs> she loves she loves cheeseburgers. So that was like that was the go to. Like she was like, okay, well, I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, doctor, down with this. Yeah, but it was difficult for her because she didn't feel that way. So she did not feel at all lean. And yeah. you know, in her defense too, she didn't. It wasn't like she had abs popping or she was like shredded. She doesn't carry herself yeah. that way. But still, doctors well, no like, body fat. Listen, you're, if you're lean as a woman, your body set. Your if a woman's body can often think we don't have enough resources, right? And so, I'm which not is why this would be here. an awful idea going into pregnancy, like that you being that low calorie. Right. Uh, listen, every female client I ever trained who was struggling with getting to, with getting pregnant, I would put them in a bulk as part of an, a protocol, and they would work with a functional medicine practitioner, and it was so successful. It was so successful. I would get referred people. Mm -hmm. for that purpose. So good stuff. Look, if you love the show, you want to learn more about peptides. We just talked about some agglutide and terzepatide. We have a peptide guide. It's free. It's totally free. It's written by our partners at mphormones.com. Check it out. Go to 
uh, mindpumpfree.com. Find the peptide guide. Totally free. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpmedia, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 